Hello, hello, hello. Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> or I guess for some of you, it's not Halloween anymore, but we'll pretend. <laughs> In fact, this stream is going to feature some holidays that happen after Halloween, so it'll kind of work out in the end. <laughs> Yeah, so um, this new model is fantastic, um, but it has some limitations, specifically the scarf. I kind of didn't realize how chonky it is. Um, <laughs> when I tried to put on my usual ghost outfit, it didn't quite work, and I was like, you know what, it, this is the opportunity. I can grab that witch hat that I've been meaning to grab, so it works out perfectly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you me shivered me timber. <laughs> you me spooky noko. Indeed, indeed. Welcome everyone. Happy Halloween. Um, happy day after Halloween for some of you. And happy almost Day of the Dead. We'll be talking about a bunch of stuff. Um, essentially, I thought this would be a really nice way to talk about not just Halloween, but also the origins and some of the things that have carried over from very, very old versions of what is now called Halloween, as well as the Day of the Dead, because it's a bit of a three-day affair. Uh, we've got Halloween on the 31st, and then you've got the Day of the Dead and celebrations leading up to that on November 1st and 2nd. So, yes, indeed, for some of you. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Um, it is also All Saints Day. There's oh, there's a lot of different things. Um, they're all kind of connected to each other, and I thought it would be fun to talk about that. And also just to celebrate Halloween with y'all, because I think it would be fun. There's also a lot of um, very, very North American traditions with Halloween. <laughs> at least the modern version, and as someone who has grown up around that, I figured I could share some of that with y'all, explain some of the things that I did growing up, um, and some of the traditions that are still around today. I thought that would be super fun. So yeah. Yes! Oh, that's fantastic! Some of y'all are making your, your family altars. That's wonderful! Oh. And happy it's it's a little bit early but um yeah i hope that everyone's celebrations for the day of the dead dia de muertos goes well and yeah we're gonna talk about that and halloween today so yeah it's gonna be good <laughs> oh man and here's the thing um whether or not y'all celebrate any of these holidays it's kind of why i love this as a series is that we can learn more about them talk about the different ways that things are celebrated and then you can kind of celebrate it here um we can talk about things and then like i don't know i think it's really nice to be able to celebrate a bunch of different holidays and learn about different things so yeah it's gonna be all right we'll we'll do it together <laughs> We'll celebrate here together. It'll be all good. And yeah, you know, I thought about changing my BGM to something more spooky, but I don't know. I thought it would be kind of nice to still have something cozy as we hop into this, even though it's Halloween. <laughs> we'll still do it. It will be very good. But yeah, no, um, I'm very excited because I figured, um, especially I have heard a lot from friends who have lived in different countries. They've always been very fascinated about how Halloween is celebrated in North America um, because we've we've kind of, uh, we've sort of spread it all over the place. So yeah, <laughs> I'm excited to talk with you all about that. Um, and yeah, kind of how that has changed quite a bit from how it was originally, so. <laughs> You know, I appreciate that, Sky. I will try my hardest not to get stabbed in the eye with this lantern. It's getting close. It's getting very close. <laughs> That's the spookiest thing for me. Man, hey, okay. So before we hop into this, I do want to um, talk about the very spooky thing that happened to Bear and I. I guess I would... Hmm, maybe I should get to that a little later. It's not nearly as spooky as y'all think, but let's just say that winter started early, and I'm very upset about it. <laughs> I thought I had at least a week or two. I thought I would be safe, but no, there's snow outside, so I'm screwed. <sighs> Alas, my beautiful, beautiful fall season is over. Just like that. It's over. Oh, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Yeah, no. It snowed actually last night. It started snowing at 6 p.m., so it wasn't even... Uh, 
Halloween yet. But yeah, no, we didn't get any trick-or-treaters today. <laughs> Which I think is good. I would have been very concerned if we did because it's extremely cold outside. It's like, I think less than zero degrees Celsius and um, less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit right now. That's too cold. So not a fan. That's not even November yet. <sighs> yeah, I know. Here's the thing. <laughs> they are already packing Christmas stuff on the shelves. They know. They know that winter is coming. It's horrible. Oh, um, another thing that I have for you all, um, the last time that we all hung out for something just like this, I had promised you all that I would try some food, <laughs> specifically these three foods, at the very end of our Moon Festival stream. And I have, as of this video, I have finally had all three of these things. So. I figured I will I will pass along my report, my thoughts on these different foods <laughs> that you all very kindly recommended that I go and try out. So let's do it. We're going to hop into our food report first, catch you up on, on what I tried out since last time, and then we'll hop into the origins of Halloween and celebrations of it and Day of the Dead. So yeah, starting off first with the very first suggestion that I was given, coconut water. There were many, many mixed, very strong feelings about coconut water. <laughs> Some people really liked it. Some people uh, did not like it, vehemently so. Um, so I, I figured I should give it a try, see what I thought for myself. My official rating of coconut water, after having tried it, I am rating it I, the letter I, for it's okay. <laughs> I thought that coconut water was okay. Um, I, I, I'm fairly neutral about it. I think it's okay. Um, I probably will still drink regular water over it. I can understand why some folks would like it. It's got kind of a nice taste to it. It's almost got like, I don't know, it's, it, it feels thicker than water, which is kind of weird. <laughs> It's okay. That's that's what I'm gonna go with. It's okay. I can understand why some folks like it. I am fairly neutral. Um, I will probably just stick with regular water. <laughs> but I understand for the folks who like it. I can understand the appeal. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Sky. <laughs> Coconut water makes me appreciate the taste of normal water. That's the thing. When I was drinking it, I did find myself really wanting regular water. I think it was because it was almost kind of thick and sweet. And so I was like, oh, I need, I need like regular water or something. It's kind of like when you have something that's way too salty. Um, and then you're like, I need to, I need to drink something. Um, I guess technically that's a thing that happens with sugary foods too, is it makes you really want to drink. So <laughs> not over K, but I for the it's. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. I for it's okay. <laughs> So this is my rating, my rating of coconut water. Thank you all for the suggestion. Next, durian. Now this one, this one was a, a one that people who liked it, um, especially folks who had grown up eating it, they said that it was very good, but it is an acquired taste, um, which already from the beginning, that made me think that this was going to taste very strong and it was going to have a very unique taste to it. And I will say, that was correct. <laughs> and durian did not taste how I expected it to taste. I will say though, after both Bear and I consumed it, we were reminded of something else, which was kind of interesting. Um, it tasted like some other vegetable, which we were not expecting. So I will give the durian an O rating for oniony. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but um, durian kind of tasted like onion fruit. It was really weird. Um, I think if I tried it a lot, I'd probably come around to it, but it was, it was bizarre. <laughs> it did smell very strongly, um, but yeah, it, it tasted like an onion fruit, which I like onions a lot. But I was not expecting this, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna rate it O for oniony. 
<laughs> this is this is my reading of durian. Um, and that's the thing, onions are good. They're very tasty, but I was not expecting this to taste like that. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I figured this would be a, a bit of an odd comparison, but uh, yeah. You know, that is actually an interesting point. It is almost like caramely, buttery onion fruit. <laughs> It's not bad, but like, <laughs> it's weird. It's very different. So I would say for those of you who are interested, still give it a shot. Um, we weren't able to find fresh durian, unfortunately, but we did our best to get uh, um, essentially we got uh, ice cream that y'all had suggested. We got a couple of different types. All of them tasted like this. So I, I'm firmly convinced that it's the actual flavor of the durian that's causing this. Um, I don't know. It could potentially be something else, but I, I suspect it's the durian that's doing this. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, if man, when we opened the package, whoo boy, even with it just being a, an ice cream, that was, um, very, very strong smelling. So yeah, right? It is. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad that this comparison isn't totally outlandish. It is a bit like caramelized onion. It's really weird, right? Like it, you wouldn't expect that. But yeah, Bear was the one who figured that out because both of us were sitting there eating it being like, this tastes like something that we've had before. Something very unexpected. So, <laughs> but yeah, here's the thing. I love, I love onions. So I think this is something that I would probably need to have more of for it to grow on me. I was just so surprised when I ate it. It did, I did not expect it to taste like it did, but yeah. Um, definitely an acquired taste, but I'm giving it an O for oniony. That is my, <laughs> that is my reading for durians. <laughs> and finally, jackfruit. We actually were able to get a hold of a whole jackfruit. Um, so we had the actual plant, which is pretty exciting. Um, Bear ended up preparing it and then we had a bunch of it, which was awesome. So after having it, I had heard some things from some folks saying that jackfruit, um, if you were going to stack it up against durian, most people would prefer durian over jackfruit. So I was kind of expecting that. I was like, okay, so I've had the surprisingly oniony durian. <laughs> what is jackfruit going to taste like? Also, don't apologize if y'all are late. You're totally fine. You're totally fine. No worries. We're just doing a food report. <laughs> You're totally fine. <laughs> Here's the thing. We cut up the jackfruit. We ate the jackfruit. Am I rating for it? It was A for all right. <laughs> a for all right. Um, I, I thought the jackfruit tasted pretty good. It was kind of refreshing. It was weird. It was like a refreshing fruit, sort of in a way that like water is refreshing. It was really bizarre. So I'll, I'm going to give it a solid A. No minus, no plus, just a solid A for all right. So yeah, I think it was okay. <laughs> Did it taste like Jack? I, you know, I, I've never, I've never, um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I've never eaten a Jack, so I don't know. But, but Jack fruit was quite, quite tasty. So I don't know. I liked it. It was very good. Um, but yeah. I thought it was, it was quite tasty. <laughs> Isaac, I'm going to need a proper tier list for these ratings. <laughs> I thought y'all might like that. <laughs> oh no, did Bear eat Jack? Maybe that's why I don't know. <gasps> I'm going to have to ask him after this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. I'm sorry for being sorry about being late. <laughs> You were, you were forgiven. You were completely fine. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Oh my God, y'all are funny. Oh, good God. That's a, that's not a bad idea though. I can, I could come up with a tier list for you all because I have a feeling I'm going to be doing some more of these. <laughs> putting together some more of these ratings. But yeah, um, so Coconut Water is rated I for it's all, it's it's okay, it's all right. Um, we've got Durian, which was O for oniony, and the Jackfruit is A for all right. So yeah, I think it worked out pretty okay. 
<laughs> Thank you all for the suggestions. I really appreciate it. It was really fun going and trying to find these. Um, I was really happy we actually got a whole jackfruit. That was really exciting. So yeah, I thought that was really good. Ooh, so that's our catch up from uh, the last stream of these that we did. <laughs> I figured I'd, I'd let you all know my report on how these different foods tasted. <laughs> I got an A on my test, Mom. <laughs> good, good, good boy, Jack. You did so good. You got an A for all right. It all worked out. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. All right. Now that we have completed our catch-up, our, our continuation from the Moon Festival, it's now time to hop into... The origins and modern day celebrations of Halloween and the Day of the Dead, which are more connected than you might realize. So, in particular, the main topic of today started as Halloween, and the more research I did into it, uh, the more I realized that I could actually combine these two together, which is super exciting, because I really wanted to do just uh, one of these on the Day of the Dead. Um, but now I can do both of these together, which is wonderful. So some things that you all might know about modern Halloween in particular is that it's often associated with costumes and candy and spooky decorations. The Day of the Dead, you all might know it's associated with trying to celebrate lost ones, going back to visit graves, going and uh, presenting an altar that will have food and things that a loved one most loved. But there are some interesting connections between these two holidays, and we're going to hop into it during the rest of this. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, spooky time. <laughs> So let's hop into it, y'all. So these traditions, interestingly enough, there are a lot of things that go into modern Halloween and the modern Day of the Dead, but the very, very, very oldest versions of these things are actually Gaelic, which is kind of wild. It's pretty incredible how these holidays have spread all over the world. Um, it's pretty cool to see how, like, different travel and people moving to different places and spreading traditions has spread this all over the place. But way, way, way long ago, this started in Gaelic pagan traditions. In the... Whew, I practiced this. Uh, Samhain? Samhain Festival. Um, I'm going to try very, very hard not to call this Samhain. <laughs> That is how it is written. That is not how it is pronounced in Gaelic. Samhain. Samhain. Okay. So um, this is an old pagan festival. Um, so Gaelic, that region, um, you can kind of think of it as Ireland and then a little bit of the northern UK was this region. And as we will get into, you're going to start seeing a lot of similarities with some of these modern festivals. But here is where a lot of this, the deep roots of these holidays, this is where this comes from. So way, way, way back when all of these festivals were Samhain, this was originally celebrated from October 31st through November 1st. And it was focused on remembering the dead, paying homage to them, and trying to celebrate their lives. And it was also a festival about safely entering winter. Because in the old Gaelic calendar, November 1st marked the first day of winter. And it was funny because originally when I was writing this, I was going to make a joke about how, oh, you might think that November 1st is pretty early for winter, but I've had snow on November 1st before. And then it snowed yesterday. <laughs> so it just is winter where I am. So pretty on point, pretty on point. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, uh, I'm not sad about the fact that it's winter here already. But yes, um, it, it was also winter time there. So, <laughs> so this festival um, in particular, so the reason why it was focused around this time is because this would be the very, very end of the harvest season. So you've 
gathered all your crops, nothing is growing anymore, you are now preparing for the long, cold, brutal winter. And as you're heading into this, a lot of folklore around this was pretty reasonably worried about maybe all of these crops that you harvested would end up spoiling. Maybe there would be famine or maybe there would be disease or really harsh winters. And so the people wanted to have some way to ward that off. So this period of time, because it was such a, a frightening uh, thought that you were about to go into winter, it actually took on a secondary meaning where this time period, October 31st and November 1st, it was said to be when the boundary between the realms of the dead and the living were at their most thin. So you would actually have on October 31st and November 1st, the fear that spirits would come back to the realm of the living. And that was a pretty scary thought. So a lot of this festival was surrounded, essentially uh, trying to find ways to prevent these spirits from causing mischief and destruction as you were heading into the winter, making sure they weren't going to destroy your crops that you had spent all of this time trying to harvest. So, some of these spirits, I will say, were not necessarily out to destroy all the crops and cause disease and cause everyone to perish. Some of these spirits were said to be kind and benevolent, good. They were long lost relatives who would have this one opportunity on October 31st and November 1st for the first time throughout the whole year, they could actually come back to the realm of the living and they would make their way back to their family homes again. It was really lovely because a lot of families would set out an extra set of food and dishes, anticipating that a relative would be coming back to visit them. So they'd make an extra set of food that would sit at their table. They would make an altar in a lot of cases just to welcome their old family members back. And it was not just a festival of fear, um, I guess is what I'm trying to make it seem, is that even though there was this looming fear of the long dark winter, it was also a nice moment to reflect on the people who you'd lost and celebrate them to be less afraid of the fact that they were gone and more appreciative of the things that you loved about them, which I think is lovely. That's something that the Day of the Dead also celebrates quite a bit, which we'll get into, but I love that. I think that's such a wonderful idea. So some of the spirits are these long lost relatives making their way back on October 31st and November 1st which is good. Um, they would come through, they'd be greeted home with food. Um, a lot of times flames would be lit, candles, just to welcome them back home, as well as treasured belongings displayed on an altar. However, <laughs> those other spirits that I was talking about before were considered to be very dangerous. And it was said that they would try to bring decay and death if there wasn't something done about them. So there was a lot of things that people would do to try and either appease these dangerous spirits, so make it so that the spirits were happy and that they wouldn't come and cause destruction, or there were other measures that they would take to try and protect themselves as they headed into the dark, cold winter. So. Let's talk about what some of these measures were, because I think they're interesting and you're going to start to see some fascinating similarities with our modern day Halloween. So for one thing, there were food offerings. This was a lovely idea because people were already giving essentially food offerings to long lost relatives, right? As they were coming back from the realm of the dead and were said to be visiting their families, it stood to reason that if long lost relatives could be happy with food offerings, why not the dangerous ghosts too? So oftentimes people would go from house to house, gathering up offerings and getting everything prepared. Sometimes people would leave offerings at their house. They would take it to a communal place together and they would try to appease the spirits this way. 
So this was one particular tradition that they ended up going with. Then, <laughs> oh, I actually summarized my point. Just like the ancestor spirits, malevolent spirits were said to enjoy food offerings. In addition, there would be fire. Fire was a thing that was very, very common at the Samhain festivals. And this was because it was said to be a form of magic. So fire is very bright, it's very warm, and it was said to imitate the sun. So with this type of magic, if you lit a fire, either a very big bonfire, which was very common at Samhain events, they would have a gigantic bonfire in the center of town, or you could have smaller fires, maybe lights or candles that you would have in your home or that you would use to travel with, these would ward off the spirits, which were associated with the dark decay of winter. So you've got these bright lights and they're making the things that come from the dark go back into the dark, if that makes sense. So a lot of fire was associated with this, um, both in the form of bonfires and in candles. Now, if all else fails, there was one last trick that people would also do for the Samhain festival. They would take on disguises. The logic of this was that if you disguise yourself as a dangerous spirit, maybe they'll leave you alone. They won't recognize that you're a human, and so they won't come to cause death and decay upon you and your household. So people would dress up as dangerous spirits. They would put on ghoulish outfits and all sorts of spooky attire, and they would try to look as terrifying as possible, just so that the spirits wouldn't think to mess with them, which I think is Wonderful. <laughs> I think that is such a great idea. You've got three lines of defense. You have your food, you're trying to appease the spirits first, and you're like, okay, just to be safe, let's also light a bunch of fires. We'll have a bonfire so that the spirits stay away from it. We'll have little candles that we set up as well. And then we will also wear these disguises just as an extra layer of defense. Now, <laughs> If you combine a couple of these things together, disguising yourself as a horrible spirit, and the fact that spirits were said to be shunned by fire and light, you could create horrifying lanterns. <laughs> this, if you can believe it, is a turnip. Um, that was what a lot of people at Samhain festivals did, is they carved turnip lanterns and they're horrifying <laughs> like appropriately horrifying this turnip is on display in a museum and it is so deeply unsettling and you can also see what it would look like when it's lit on the right it's um very unsettling but it's also just like combining a couple of the things they're like okay so on top of all these other things we've done, something else that we can do is we can make sure we always have a light in front of our different houses and we'll set it up so that it looks like a horrifying spirit with the light inside of it. So a lot of people would carve turnips with horrifying faces and then light them from inside. So put a candle in in order to ward off spirits. You would place these inside of your windows or you would place these outside of your house just as a way to ward off spirits and make sure that they wouldn't come and cause death and decay upon your household. Yes, turnip, the most frightening vegetable. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, I thought y'all might be <laughs> unsettled by this turnip. When I first saw this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm pretty impressed at uh, how horrible they made this, like in a horrifying way. It's, it's fantastic. It's oh, absolutely amazing. <laughs> But yes, no, these were turnips, which is pretty wild. So already you'll see that there's some similarities to some modern day festivals, but we've got a little ways to go still before they start looking exactly like what they are today. As the years went on, some of these traditions began to take on new forms. 
In particular, it began slowly and then became more popular where people would not only disguise themselves as these horrible spirits, but they would actually go house to house, accepting food offerings on behalf of the spirits. So they would go to different houses, they would act as if they were the bad spirits, saying, you must give me a food offering or else I'll cause mischief upon your household and then they would be given food. I love this. I think this is a great evolution of this tradition because for one thing, it's just more practical. Like <laughs> the food offerings going towards people who would be in a dire um, food situation as they head into winter, I think is quite good. <laughs> I think that's very smart just to make sure that the food you have is going to mouths that it can feed. I think that kind of food offering is always good. You can offer it to people and then you can eat it yourself. I think that's good. <laughs> always fantastic. But I do love that this was how things changed, that they, I'm not sure based on the things that I looked through, it was kind of unclear why this began to take off. There was a lot of different theories. I personally really love the idea of them just going and essentially going to the next level of this. It's not enough just to look like the spirits, you have to act like them too. So anyway, um, you're going around asking for treats or else you'll trick people. So this began to get popular as time went on. <laughs> Sky. Oh, but when I go door to door demanding food, I get the cops called on me. I feel that pain. <laughs> I wish I could continue trick-or-treating as an adult. We'll talk more about that soon, but <laughs> I think that would be lovely. It's true, if you dressed up as a, a spooky spirit, that might have been that might have been a little too scary for them. <laughs> But yeah, you can already see things are starting to look a little similar to some of our modern day celebrations. In addition, though, some of the celebrations specifically of deceased loved ones, those ones began to extend one additional day. So originally Samhain was celebrated on October 31st and on November 1st, but there were some groups that started to split off from that that also would celebrate on November 2nd. And that was the day when they would celebrate lost loved ones. As time went on and <laughs> many, many different empires and regimes swept through Europe, <laughs> lots of uh, powers um, changed hands uh, and Christianity became uh, pretty dominant throughout the region. They actually adopted a lot of these traditions and turned them into some of the days that some of you might be familiar with. So All Hallows Eve, All Souls Day, and All Saints Day. These would continue to be propagated as Europeans went all over the world, did a, a wee bit of the uh, colonialism, and um, fascinatingly, a lot of these ideas kind of traveled. <laughs> they, um, they kind of ended up all over the place. In particular, these traditions were brought to the Americas, North, Central, South, and they took on some pretty dramatic new forms because it turns out that the Americas um, already had some traditions that they were very fond of, many of which were related to celebrating the dead, as it turns out, because it's a thing that humans have found is nice to celebrate your lost loved ones in some way. And so, <laughs> uh, things started to transform quite a bit from the original Samhain into modern day Halloween and the Day of the Dead. We're going to talk about those because they're fascinating. They have some similarities to the original Samhain from many, many, many hundreds of years ago. <laughs> And now they have taken on new fascinating forms that incorporate cultures and ideas from the places where people ended up, which I think is lovely. We're actually going to start 
Instead of talking about Halloween first, we're going to jump right into the Day of the Dead, which officially it's on November 2nd, but a lot of celebrations will start a day or two early. So a lot of times it'll be listed November 1st through the 2nd. So the Day of the Dead, <laughs> you can already see that this has a very different look to it from Samhain. Yes, it does still have some of the, I suppose you could say spooky imagery, but this is very iconic for Latin America, especially Mexico, which I would say has some of the most beautiful, very impressive Day of the Dead celebrations. But the Day of the Dead is celebrated in a lot of different countries, and I'm going to walk you through how different countries celebrate it, the similarities that they have with each other, and similarities it has to way, way back when it was just a Gaelic pagan festival, because it turns out the Americas had a lot of people who had really beautiful ideas that they have incorporated into this. And I think it's really cool. So first thing, the Day of the Dead is celebrated in a variety of European countries, and it's also celebrated in Latin America. There are certain communities in the northern part of America, so in Canada and in the United States, that will also celebrate the Day of the Dead. But as far as really big organized festivals, those tend to be more in Latin America and then in some European countries as well. So something that is common across these events and something that dates all the way back to when this was Samhain is celebrating your ancestors because it's still thought that November 1st and November 2nd is when we're closest to the world of the dead. And so the lost, lo the long lost souls of loved ones will actually be able to make it back here and visit you for a day which I think is lovely. <laughs> I think that's so beautiful. I think something that in particular, um, my culture in the United States tends to be very fearful of death. It's a very frightening thing. And this isn't to diminish that. I think that fear of death is pretty natural. <laughs> but I love this idea of trying to celebrate it, trying to celebrate the people that you've lost and also show that it's okay. Even when people are gone, you can still remember them, you can celebrate their lives, and once a year, you'll get to go and visit their graves. A lot of times, these absolutely beautiful marigold flowers are put on graves. They're so beautiful. <laughs> oh, they're just gorgeous. And you just get to sit and spend some time with loved ones talking about people who you love and celebrating them, getting excited about the things that you loved about them. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. It's a celebration of life, which I think is great because I think that the fear of death shouldn't keep you from appreciating life. And the fear of having lost people shouldn't stop you from getting to celebrate their lives. So I love this. I think this is such a beautiful festival and I love that it's celebrated in so many different places. Oh. It's so wonderful. So yeah, I think this is fantastic. So a lot of Day of the Dead celebrations will involve going to the actual graves of loved ones. Um, sometimes this will just be with family. Sometimes it will be a big group event where an entire town might all go to a grave together. Um, they'll go to a cemetery and all celebrate together. And I think it's lovely. It's, it's good. Yes, exactly. Oh my gosh. And here's the thing. Some of y'all are, are from Mexico. And so y'all will know a lot of this much better than I do. But I absolutely love that. People don't totally leave you. I think that's so lovely. And then this is a day where you can remember that, that the people you've lost are still with you. Ugh. Ugh. It's so good. It's so beautiful. <laughs> It's how we will celebrate Yumi after we get the bounty. Now, 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 listen. <laughs> I thought y'all were only chopping off my tail. I didn't know I had to worry about my life. <sighs> moving on, moving on. Gotta distract them with, with very beautiful sentimental things. <laughs> I think I could do this. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of different traditions from different areas. So this is actually a pretty big festival in parts of Italy. So this is an Italian basket of the dead. 
The idea with this, which I think is lovely, is that these are actually prepared as opposed to be offerings for people who you've lost. So instead of being offerings for the dead, they're offerings from the dead, and they're often given to children. So parents and families will prepare these baskets. They'll have treats in them. They'll have marzipan. They'll have toys. They'll hide them someplace, and then the children will go find them, and they will present them as gifts from lost grandparents or relatives or other people in their lives, just to show them that they're still there and they still love them, which I think is so nice. Oh, I'm getting, I'm, I'm choking up just talking about all this. I think this is so sweet. Oh, it's such a nice idea. But yeah, um, there's a lot of treats that will be shaped from marzipan. So you'll see a lot of that in there. But you can also see this is a modern day um, <laughs> version of this, which I think is great. And it's got a bunch of Kinder Eggs and other chocolate in there, which I think is fantastic. So... <laughs> I think that this is absolutely fantastic. So um, in addition to going and visiting graves, this is also something that you'll commonly see in Italy as these baskets of the dead that are presented as if they're from deceased family members to living family members. And I think that's really, really nice. Then we have <laughs> some of the most iconic, most colorful, most impressive displays for the Day of the Dead. Um, are going to come out of Mexico. There is a lot of Mexican indigenous tradition that has been woven into modern Day of the Dead celebrations, and it is gorgeous. I can't even begin to talk about how much I love. <laughs> y'all, y'all in Mexico who do Day of the Dead celebrations, it's wonderful. It's perfect. It's so good. Everything is so beautiful. You have lots of these marigold flowers. Um, there's also lots of imagery of monarch butterflies, which are said to essentially be related to the land of the dead. Um, they'll be guiding souls there from how I understand it. And they're just, oh, it's so good. So in addition to going to visit graves, something that Mexico has really, really dived into is really gorgeous, elaborate family altars. So you remember with Samhain, this was something that people would do. They would put together family altars and they would include some foods that the loved one might have liked, um, maybe some of their belongings that they were treasured, but generally it would be fairly reserved. It wouldn't be like anything too extravagant, but something just nice, some beautiful gesture for them. Mexico has taken this a step further by integrating so many wonderful things into this. Like, oh my gosh, you can see, um, I'm already like gushing about this and getting way too excited, but there's a lot of things just in this one picture to talk about. Um, so in addition to favorite foods, um, which will generally be very elaborate. There will be a lot of different dishes that are all included there. You'll still have candles that are also there. You'll have these beautiful flags that will also be included. You will have, um, so it's a day of the dead bread that is shaped to have like almost little, it looks like bones on top, but it was just leftover dough that they put over it. Um, that will also be something that is shared on this day. And then you have a bunch of skull imagery, which is sort of hearkening back to a bit of that, like disguising yourself as the dead, but this is much more of a celebratory thing. This isn't a fear of the dead. It's a celebration of the dead. And skulls are a really big iconic thing, but they're colorful skulls, extremely colorful. Yes, pan de muerto. Oh my gosh, I want that so bad. It looks so good. <laughs> I am such a huge fan of bread. It looks gorgeous, absolutely wonderful. Oh my gosh. But yeah, big fan, absolutely in love with this. I think this is such a beautiful evolution of this. It's integrating both things that have come from a long, long time ago, all the way back with Sawin, and it's embracing some beautiful, colorful parts of Mexican culture, and it's just gorgeous. So yeah, anyway, I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So something I've also talked about is this bone imagery. Something that is seen in a lot of these celebrations is really gorgeous, elaborate makeup. 
Um, and it will be on anyone. <laughs> Male, female, non-binary, everyone's, everyone's gonna have some makeup if you can do it. And it's gorgeous. So it'll be really elaborate, colorful, relating to skulls and bones. But as opposed to Samhain, which was doing it to try and ward off spirits, this is a celebration of it. So it's a celebration of lost relatives, of lost ones. It's really, really good. <laughs> Fan artists, please, you, me, and Bear Skull Face Paint. <laughs> I actually wanted to try and see if I could find, because um, I absolutely love this. I think it's so gorgeous. I was unfortunately not able to find any assets and I wasn't able to draw myself something in time, but yeah, it is so good. Oh, thank you. It's called La Katrina Makeup. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so gorgeous, y'all. <laughs> it's so good. And here's the thing, I barely even scratched the surface. Like there's so many other traditions specifically <laughs> with Mexican Day of the Dead celebrations. They're, oh, they're absolutely wonderful. Um, so some other things I've mentioned is in addition to makeup, you'll also see a lot of sugar skulls. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a treat that's made of sugar, but it's shaped like a skull. So it's still a celebration of the dead and still continuing with these bright, colorful skull patterns. Um, you can actually see in this one I included too, you've actually got some butterflies because that's also a thing that's related to the festival. So yeah, um, Mexico, y'all go hard. It's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> I think this is absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, I wish this was a thing all over the place because I think this is amazing. <laughs> I think this is such a beautiful thing, a fantastic way to celebrate loved ones and also get together with people that you love. Share some good food, share some good times, some good stories, go visit people that you've lost, but also knowing that you haven't really lost them. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> Are bones edible? It's a good question. You're gonna have to try it out. <laughs> you're gonna have to see. <laughs> if you're a vulture, you could just consume them whole and then just let your stomach acid do it, so. Oh, I'm so happy that, oh, I don't know. I, I, I love this. Y'all are wonderful. I think this is such a beautiful way that this festival has evolved. And here's the thing. So there are, um, a lot of other Day of the Dead celebrations to talk about too. In particular, one that I really, really wanted to highlight is from Guatemala. They have integrated old, beautiful Mayan traditions with the Day of the Dead. So they make these absolutely gorgeous kites. And like, you can see how big they are, right? Like, <laughs> The people are so small right next to these kites. But the idea is that you fly these kites as a way to guide the dead back to the earth. So it's a way to bring them back from the spirit world in the sky, back to the world of the living. This is also celebrated on November 1st and the 2nd. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No, this is a kite. I was stunned when I saw these. <laughs> They are gorgeous and they incorporate a lot of Mayan designs, color choices, symbology. It's so beautiful. So I really wanted to highlight this because I think this is absolutely fantastic. But here's the thing, I wasn't able to go over, there's so many other countries that celebrate this in different ways. I was actually able to find similar celebrations um, that are done in Brazil and in all sorts of other places in Latin America. They're all just gorgeous. But I wanted to highlight these um, just because I thought that they were beautiful. Um, and just a way to show you all that like, this is the kind of festival that I think um, I would love to see more of. I think that this is such a lovely idea, a way to come together, remember loved ones, and also celebrate life and the lives that they lived. So yeah, they are gorgeous. <gasps> Oh my gosh, GSK, Guatemalan kites are amazing. Got to see them when you traveled there. Oh, I'm so jealous when I saw these. Oh my God, they look so beautiful. I'm just stunned. Like this must have taken so much work to put these together. And just look at them. They're so gigantic. That's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Here's the thing, some kites are small, but these kites are gigantic. They go hard. It's wonderful. <laughs> 
Mellow Mellow, I completely agree. The world could use more celebration for the end of life. I completely agree. I think it's just like, I don't know. I think it's a good thing to celebrate life um, for yourself and for the people that you've loved. So yeah, that's kind of my thought on it. I love this. So I think this is really wonderful, the way that this has evolved. Um, the Americas go really hard. <laughs> Um, the Americas do have a tendency to take holidays, integrate it with uh, some of our own culture, and then like go absolutely wild with it. So <laughs> that is what has happened with the Day of the Dead. It's beautiful um, throughout Mexico and all of Central and South America. I absolutely love these Day of the Dead celebrations. And this isn't to dismiss the ones in Europe. I think those are beautiful too. Like, I think that this is all just a fantastic celebration. And honestly, I wish that um, there was more of it. I just think that it's really cool how like things have evolved and changed and like become new beautiful things on top of that. I think that's really good. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's very, very good. So that is the Day of the Dead. That is how it has evolved and changed as it has uh, jumped across the sea <laughs> and come into contact with very, very colorful, beautiful ideas and has evolved even further, which is absolutely fantastic. In addition to that, we also have modern Halloween. So this, uh, as you could have seen from Sawin, uh, there's a lot of things that have come out of that that are still in modern day Halloween. Um, but similarly to the Day of the Dead, uh, North America went really hard with this. <laughs> Once this reached North America, um, we kind of went a little wild with this. And uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll walk you through how modern Halloween as originating from uh, North America is now celebrated because it's got a lot of roots from Samhain, but you'll see that there's been some pretty interesting changes that have happened. Some things that I'm a fan of um, and some things, this, <laughs> some things to talk about that have, <laughs> that have also become very iconic with this. So yeah, yes indeed. I am indeed from the United States of America. It has snowed here today. I am sad about it. <laughs> but I must accept that the winter has finally arrived. But y'all, let's uh let's talk about it. <laughs> Mellow Mello, Yumi's not American, she's under guardian. You know, actually, undergroundian, that's actually a very fair point. I guess I am technically. I'm a snack. We don't have allegiances. <laughs> I might live in this place, but I have no allegiances. <laughs> I'm here to celebrate all cultures and talk about a bunch of different things, so yeah. Um, but technically, modern Halloween is celebrated in Europe primarily and the Americas, although the North American version is spreading like wildfire um, in a lot of countries. I was looking up a bunch of stuff. Uh, apparently, there's some places in Asia that actually have Halloween celebrations now. That's wild. Obviously, it's it's a thing that's that's spreading like slowly as it makes its way across the globe. Um, but yeah, let's talk about this because Halloween originated in Europe. It's still celebrated in Europe, in particular um, in Ireland, which is where Samhain generally, that is where that came out of. They still celebrate Halloween often in a way that's slightly more similar to Samhain. There's a lot of bonfires that are still lit. There's a lot more of like, I don't know, I wish that there was more of uh, the big uh, malevolent spirit energy with uh, North American Halloween, but alas, it's not quite the same. But then uh, once Halloween reached North America, um, we went kind of wild with it. And now it's kind of like turning back in on itself. So like <laughs> when I was reading up on things, there, there were so many things talking about how Ireland and like the UK have been adopting North American Halloween traditions. And that kind of blows my mind. It's kind of like, <laughs> like 
things have evolved and it's just jumping back now. So anyway, <laughs> let's talk about um, what North America did when Halloween actually reached us because we went kind of wild with this. So modern day celebrations that are still similar to Samhain, trick or treating. So this is something that is derived from the tradition of dressing up like dangerous spirits and going from house to house, asking for food offerings and stating that uh, bad things will happen if you don't provide treats. <laughs> so this in the modern day is trick or treating. Um, this is a thing most commonly done by young children Although kids all the way up through middle and high school will still do this. I actually still trick-or-treated in high school because you can't stop me. You can't stop me. <laughs> I was only able to get away with it until I was like 15 or 16 though. And then I had to accept that <laughs> it was time for me to move on. But trick-or-treating, um, hands down, fantastic. Loved it. it was super fun. It's really really fun as a kid uh you get to get dressed up which i'll show you some pictures of um but i had a pail that was just like this it looked exactly like this this bucket that has this <laughs> pumpkin face on it like they just sell these all over the place like you can just walk into a store around halloween and there's just a bunch of these so you can pick these up um you go trick-or-treating and at least when I was growing up, um, you could go from house to house, or I guess tunnel to tunnel in my case. And if someone had their lights on, you could go up and see if they were home. Um, you could ring the doorbell or knock on the door and then they would come out, they'd give you some candy and then wish you a happy Halloween and you'd go on your way, gathering up absolutely absurd amounts of candy. <laughs> like absolutely nuts here's the thing the face i also at one point there was one year where i i used a pillowcase instead of this bucket it was still fun it was still just as much fun i liked the bucket because i kept dropping the pillowcase um i don't know the bucket was was a little more sturdy for my little snake child hands but um yeah nothing wrong with doing it with a pillowcase too just as much fun <laughs> At least it was for me. Here's the thing. I have also gone trick-or-treating when it was almost snowing outside. So I don't know. I'm not sure if my memory is the best or if I was just really excited about candy. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so you were like Santa this one time. Listen, listen. <laughs> Who said anything about distributing candy and treats and presents? They're on to me. I gotta change the subject. My bounty's already too high. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, it was really, really fun. Um, enjoyed it a whole bunch. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot as a kid. Um, so obviously some kids are gonna dress up looking a little spooky, but by and large, they're just dressing up for fun. All of the old traditions of trying to look as terrifying as possible, that's that's gone away by and large. Kids are just gonna dress however they want. They'll dress up as their favorite characters, they'll dress up as ghosts, as skeletons and things, but most of the time you're gonna find kids dressing up as movie characters, book characters, or other things that they're into, so. <laughs> no, 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 no need to read into the fact that I, um, am white and red colored. Uh, no need to associate with me with Santa. It's fine. You're fine. <laughs> no need. No need to look into that. <sighs> I can't have my bounty going up further. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, you get to dress up as, as a kid and you get to go around from house to house. Um, and yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, I enjoyed getting dressed up. I always had very silly outfits. I was actually trying to think about some of the things I dressed up as. I was various uh, Disney characters throughout my childhood. And then as I got older, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I dressed up as Nausicaa uh, when I was in middle school, which 10 out of 10, fantastic. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I, I was dressing up as a lot of Miyazaki characters for a while. So yeah, that was quite good. 
But yeah, anyway, no need to think about how uh, uh, Santa and I haven't ever been seen in the same room at the same time. Yeah, I'm moving on, moving on, moving on. Definitely not Santa. Um, <laughs> something that I thought you all might enjoy. Um, and you might have heard of in association with uh, particularly Halloween out of the United States is uh, the costumes that adults wear because the kids all get dressed up in these really adorable outfits and they go trick-or-treating and they're all having fun. Um, Halloween is still celebrated by adults, especially young adults who are college-aged. Um, and it's a bit of a meme. Uh, <laughs> It's one of those things where I think, by and large, a lot of TV shows and movies that try to feature, like, high schoolers or college kids in the United States uh, tend to be written um, by people who either don't remember what it was like to be a high schooler or uh, they just do absolutely ridiculous things. What I will say, though, is all of the depictions of Halloween parties that you'll see in American movies are unfortunately pretty on point. <laughs> I have been to a couple of these. Um, so I'm going to show you all a couple of uh, Halloween costumes because it's sort of uh, a bit of a running joke that Halloween costumes tend to go really hard, especially for... Uh, the female costumes. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, you know what? Hanako is a great, great comparison. She would love these Halloween celebrations. <laughs> um, so yeah, I found a couple of the most uh, ridiculous ones that I could find, but there's so many. There's so many. You can go into just about any like costume store, which there are costume stores that pop up, at least in the United States. Um, if that happens in Canada too, my condolences. But there's a lot of uh, Halloween stores that pop up right around this time of year. And you can go walk in and uh, boy, there's just a lot of these outfits. Um, it's actually really hard to find an outfit that isn't a little ridiculous if, if you're a woman or presenting as female. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of insane. So anyway, I present to you all the, the most um, <sighs> hilarious things that I could find to demonstrate this point. So uh, yeah, these are just a sampling of some of the Halloween outfits. <laughs> Essentially, take any concept you can think of and just like... Um, add a lot of sexual repression to it, and you'll get, like, Halloween outfits that come out of my country. <laughs> there was one that I almost included that was literally a Crayola crayon that they had made sexy. Like, oh, here's the thing. You are totally right. Um, I actually had to tone these down because they go a lot harder than this, but I didn't want to get in trouble with YouTube, so... <laughs> So we're just gonna go with these. These were the most tame and yet the most absurd that I could find to demonstrate this point. Um, we have on the far left, um, <laughs> oh my God, these are so, so silly. Yeah, so the middle one, that's a sexy Ronald McDonald. Um, you know, the mascot for McDonald's. Um, <laughs> So silly, and then you just have sexy bone lady on the right, which is just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. There's so much Photoshop that's happening there, it's not even funny. Um, but yeah, anyway, I <laughs> I also unfortunately have seen a lot crazier than this in real life. Um, so yeah, people go hard. Um, and no judgment, like live your best life, but this is a very characteristic thing of these celebrations. <laughs> oh my god. But yes, um, it is it is Chucky on the far left. It's sexy Chucky, which is um, a thing, a real costume that exists. So yeah, a lot of these places you can go into, they'll have a bunch of outfits just like this. Um, and then they'll have wigs and like shoes and other things for you to wear. Um, and yeah, no, they're all kind of ridiculous. So. Um, <laughs> 
it's a bit of a meme. Um, something else I wanted to include just to be, you know, fair and balanced. Um, mercifully, this is also starting to spread uh, to uh, male presenting costumes as well. There were actually several costumes that were labeled as sexy men costumes. And I wanted to share those with you. One of them I actually was a little worried I might get in trouble with, but I'm, I'm sharing it with you all anyway, so. <laughs> We're just gonna roll with it. It's gonna be fine. But yeah, anyway, I present to you all some real, actual costumes that they have branded as sexy. One of them, I think, fits that bill much more than the other. <laughs> but anyway, I now present to you the sexy male costumes. The left is supposed to be a sexy executioner, which is deeply funny. I don't know, I thought that one was too funny not to include. The one on the right, though? <laughs> At least they got a model who, who could uh, make that work. I don't know, though. I feel like if I saw someone show up in this to a Halloween party... <laughs> Batman uses a hand axe. This is what I'm saying. He's supposed to be an executioner, but look at how tiny that hand axe is. <laughs> Man, that's a great question. I would have to look into if the muscle tone comes with the costumes. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, um, these both made me laugh a lot. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Do you know what is also insane? I have actually seen someone dress in something very similar to the one on the right <laughs> when I was in college. So yeah, um, the short story is that um, people go really hard with adult Halloween costumes, especially if they're college students. You'll still see some of this with like young adult parties, but by the time you get to be like late 20s and 30s, everyone is like going really high effort with their costumes so um like dressing up as lord of the ring characters or a whole bunch of other things like really funny jokes or puns and things like that which i'm personally a big fan of but i thought y'all would also enjoy this <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. These are real, actual costumes that are sold in my country. <laughs> and some people buy them, apparently. I don't know. I have, I have, I have seen people wear things like this, so I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> so in addition to um, some pretty wild uh, costumes that people will wear, um, also, uh, decorations are a thing that... Uh, North America has gone really, really hard with. Um, <laughs> which one did I buy for Bear? Oh, it would definitely be the Executioner one. Can you- that one is too funny. That one makes me laugh really hard. Like... <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, God. I don't know. I think it's deeply funny. The mask cracks me up. <laughs> Post a picture. Oh man. You know it's sad. I actually haven't uh, been to a Halloween party in many years, which is a shame at some point. At some point. But um, yeah, back in the day. <laughs> some of those parties were really, really funny. I always um, would do like the high effort costumes, which uh, like something that was really punny, or I would go with a character that I really liked. And then you have that awkward moment where people are like, what are you supposed to be? And you're like, oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have just dressed up as like a cat or something. That would have been better. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> do not deny us this Yumi. Yeah, the left one did look like Batman as well. <laughs> Sky, so is this the new merch line, Yumi? Where can I order? <laughs> oh man, I'm glad you all enjoyed those. I got a kick out of those. There were so many that I wanted to include in there. Um, but yeah, some of them go way too hard, so I wasn't able to include them. <laughs> imagine cat snack. Can you imagine? That would have been wild. I did actually dress up as a cat, I think, when I was a kid. Um, 
But then I didn't do it again as an adult. I should have. I should have done that, but... <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, anyway, getting back on track, getting back on track. Uh, decorations. So this was kind of a thing with Sawin. So you would have, like, lanterns and candles, and you would have um, your altars for lost loved ones. Um, but once things came to North America, Halloween decorations went crazy absolutely crazy um there's a bunch of bright lights that you can get there's all sorts of spooky things so a lot of times people will decorate the inside or the outside of their houses or their apartments or <laughs> their dorm rooms with all sorts of spooky things um they'll have ghosts they'll have spider webs they'll have all kinds of things um a lot of times like if people want to go kind of low effort um they'll just go with lights personally i don't do too much decorating anymore because there aren't very many kids that live in our area and so <laughs> i think we got like two trick-or-treaters last year we got zero this year so <laughs> They decided to stay inside, which was good. Um, very, very smart. In fact, oh, I actually forgot to mention, um, something with modern day Halloween trick-or-treating is that it's evolved even from when I was a kid. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about some of that in, in a slide or two, but um, nowadays a lot of kids will actually gather with like a bunch of people from their school um, they'll all go to like um, a communal place. Um, sometimes they'll go to like a mall or I've actually heard of people just going and hanging out in some of the parking lots. And then everyone opens up their trunks and then they all have candy inside and it's called trunk or treating as opposed to trick or treating. And I have heard a lot of people who are my age and older criticize this saying that it's denying kids um, the fun of going and walking around and doing trick-or-treating, but like, I don't know. I think that the fun is just like getting to hang out, getting to get dressed up and like getting candy. So like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if I was a kid, I'd still love that. So, and I've heard anecdotally that the kids still love it. And it's also kind of a nice, um, way to like not have kids walking around for hours at night because it, it can get really long, especially if you live in an area where people just don't like uh, do trick or treating. Like some neighborhoods just don't really set out candy and so you can't really get any. Um, so yeah, it's a thing that has taken off in the last, I think like five to 10 years is trunk or treating. Um, and yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's totally fine that like people aren't going to houses. It does mean though that um, <laughs> I probably don't need to buy as much candy as I do uh, because yeah, most of the kids who do live around here, they go and they do trunk or treating instead. Um, which I think is nice. It's a great way for like the parents to hang out with each other. Um, you're in an area that's like everyone is together. You can hang out. You can still like have a party afterwards. You can hang out like together doing things, which I think is nice. So yeah, it's good. <laughs> Tell you what, my favorite thing about Halloween was when my little sister would go trick or treating and then shove all the candy she doesn't like to you. <laughs> Oh man, that's too funny. Man, that is the funny thing about Halloween. Sometimes, um, <laughs> y'all are bringing up some really funny things. So, um, when I was a kid, sometimes people would put, like, toothbrushes instead of candy into your little bucket or your pillowcase. And you'd always mark those houses mentally as, like, the stingy houses. <laughs> They're trying to give you toothbrushes. And it's definitely because the adults think it's super funny. They're like, you're gonna need a toothbrush after all that candy. But then you end up with like five toothbrushes cause like a bunch of people all did it. <laughs> It is really sweet. It's always like, it was always older couples that would do it too, which I think, I think that was just a good idea. <laughs> Burn the toothbrush as an effigy. <laughs> oh man. You know, so a lot of people, um, I'm sure like, because it's called trick or treating, um, there is the thought that do kids actually go and prank houses that don't give them things? I don't know how it was like, uh, before my time, 
But like, no, if someone gave you bad candy or if they gave you toothbrushes, you're just like, thank you. <laughs> and then you just moved on. Like anyone who ever uh, would like toilet paper a house, um, it was definitely because it was like something else that was going on. Um, bratty kids being bratty to one of their friends. It was mostly friends doing it to other friends, which like parents didn't appreciate that, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know how much that even happens anymore. That was actually a thing when I was a kid. I knew some people who toilet papered one of their friends' houses and boy, they got chewed out for that. Oh my God, the parents of the house that got toilet papered were so angry. It took them so long to take that down. So yeah, anyway, don't do that. It's it's super gross when toilet paper gets wet and that's hanging on trees. Not, not fun. <laughs> Yeah, most of the time people throw it into trees. They don't throw it on houses and that's somehow, I don't know, it's, it's just as obnoxious. So yeah, um, don't do it. It's not fun. <laughs> Having seen the results of it, <laughs> it's no good. Uh, <laughs> Noogie, I had houses ask me to do a trick before I could get my treat and I would do a cool ninja spin. Holy, holy shit, that's amazing. That's so brilliant. Having you do a trick? <gasps> That's some next level thinking. <laughs> a cool ninja spin is amazing. You mean your house is getting toilet paper? Oh no, well, <laughs> not much I can do about that, unfortunately. It's fun until it happens to you. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, so yeah, that is quite a funny thing. I actually don't know with trunk or treating if any of the parents would include toothbrushes just for good measure. <laughs> Maybe you'll have one family that's like, <laughs> we're gonna get all the kids. Let's let's make sure our car is the one that has toothbrushes in it. <laughs> I don't know, that would crack me up. So while while it is a definite change from tradition, I can also understand why people are uh, more on board with that. Because you get to all hang out together as a big group. Um, all the kids get to see their friends from school um, or just get to hang out with their folks and get some candy. And yeah, I don't know. I'm fine with it personally. Um, but yeah, <laughs> do people have like Halloween drinks? Um, if you're an adult, people mostly just make Halloween punch. Um, <laughs> it'll be like uh, the ones that I've had, I think have had vodka in them. Um, and then just like some sort of red soft drink that you poured in them. My general advice with those though is anytime I've ever been to a party that had Halloween punch, no one drank it because um, everyone had been taught up to that point, don't ever touch something that you haven't opened yourself, which is just generally good advice. If you're going to have a drink, especially as a college student or if you're at a party, always be the one to open the drink yourself. <laughs> Don't leave your drink unattended. Um, and yeah, big suspicious bowls of red punch uh, were never consumed, so. <laughs> Generally, I would just suggest uh, bringing drinks. Or if you're with good friends, you could probably get away with it. Um, but yeah, I always thought that was really funny. People would always prepare these gigantic punch uh, bowls and then no one would drink it. Everyone would just get beers. Um. <laughs> Which I think was smart. I think that was probably the smart decision. Oh, okay, decorations. I got a little sidetracked, but I think I think that was good. I was talking about some stuff I meant to talk about earlier. So yeah, decorations are, are kind of silly. Um, they're very fun. Uh, people will either like set up stuff in their house or they might set up stuff outside of their place. Um, Something that you might have also heard about, uh, in particular, celebrations that take place in the United States, uh, some people go really, really hard with alcohol. Oh my gosh, I, I read the thing as it was coming in. <laughs> the, one, the only time alcohol is the right answer. Um, I meant to say they go really hard with decorations. <laughs> They go really hard with alcohol too, to be fair. They go hard with both of these things, alcohol and decorations. So um, I'm gonna show you all. <laughs> this was featured um, as a celebration in New York. Um, 
This is only part of the decorations. So this is in front of someone's house in Long Island, New York. There are uh, actual little gates that they have set up on their lawn. Um, they have all sorts of gravestones and statues and lights and other things. And you can see the something that looks suspiciously like a person in the middle. Um, that's because that is a person. This is one of the main reasons why I personally feel like trunk or treating is totally fine. <laughs> Because there are some adults that exist that think it is deeply funny to sit either on their porch or in front of their house pretending to be a decoration and then when kids come up in order to get candy, they scare the absolute hell out of them and then laugh maniacally for a really long time. Of course they love scaring the adults too, but um, as someone that this has happened to multiple times. <laughs> I was not a fan. I was not a fan. It was not good. I was extremely upset when this happened to me, and I refused to walk up to houses that I thought might have a person sitting on them after that, so... <laughs> I guess they saved themselves some candy from kids who were very wary about that. Um, but yeah, here's the thing. Not everyone sits on their porch. Some people will end up just doing really elaborate decorations that are really spooky, um, there's a lot of things that folks will do. Um, I've seen something really common is people pretend that a witch has flown either into the side of a house or into a tree. Um, <laughs> I've seen people who will make very grotesque sculptures that will hang out on their lawns, which again, whew, that's a little spooky walking up on. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. Very spooky as a kid walking up and being like, oh my god, that's supposed to be a person but they're missing limbs and it's very well done. Whoever did this took a lot of time <laughs> and effort doing this. So yeah, um, anyway, the decorations also go really, really hard um, and people go kind of nuts with it. Uh, some places will have so many lights in front of their house. I, I legitimately don't know how they sleep. Like there's, there's so much light that's shining on them, but I guess it is just for, that's no, not just, I was going to say it was just for the one day a year, but they actually do it all of October. So like, it's not just the one day. <laughs> oh, God, it's true, Sky. Sometimes they'll swap it out for a doll so you don't know if it's real. It's the worst. You're just like walking up to something that is person-sized and you're like, God, this thing is gonna spook me. And then it doesn't, it's fake. And then <laughs> you go to another house and it's a real person. <sighs> so anyway, um, <laughs> wasn't a fan of that but I'm sure that the people who did it had a lot of fun with it so I'm um, glad for them uh, but yeah some people get really into it and get really passionate with it I honestly really love when people go really crazy with Halloween decorations because it's very fun to see um, it's really cool just to see like how creative people get with stuff and sometimes people are very very elaborate with things so yeah <laughs> it is kind of wild but yeah um, so decorations Another type of decoration that you will often see are carved pumpkins, which is really, really awesome. Um, unfortunately, one thing I will say, I'm not sure if this is also true up in Canada, but unfortunately in the United States nowadays, when people carve pumpkins, it used to be that you would go and just set it on your porch. So you'd go and you'd put it out, um, or if you're like at an apartment, you'd put it out in front of your apartment door, um, and then you'd put a little light in it and people could come up and see it. It made it kind of spooky when kids were coming up to your house. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know why this started, but like, <sighs> I don't mean to blame teenagers. Y'all are going through a lot, but some teenagers think it's really funny to um, go and grab pumpkins and smash them. <laughs> um, it's actually such a big problem that uh, most people I know nowadays don't ever put their pumpkins outside because uh, they're going to get smashed. Someone is going to come and smash them. Um, <laughs> Someone is going to make a dedicated effort to come and find your pumpkin. And I, I want them to be beautiful and to look good. <sighs> I know, right? It's it's so tragic. It made me so sad the first time it ever happened. Like, we all um, 
in the underground had prepared some pumpkins and I was very happy with my pumpkin. And uh, yeah, uh, we set it outside and it wasn't even Halloween yet. And um, it was totally smashed. And uh, yeah, so um, a word of warning. <laughs> If you're someone who wants to do this um, and who wants to set it outside, do be cautious. They they seem to attract um, very excitable, uh, mostly teenagers who want to smash them because smashing pumpkins is very fun, like objectively, like it is very fun. I've had to do it like when you're you're getting rid of them, um, but like that's also sad. So anyway, we're going to talk about the positive things about pumpkin carving now. <laughs> And again, obviously, this is not all teenagers. It's a very, very small subsection of teenagers who want to smash pumpkins um, and get really into it. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, no pumpkins outside, but pumpkins inside. And uh, pumpkins are something that uh, really took off in North America because, again, with Samhain, that was turnips. But pumpkins are gigantic. <laughs> They're really, really great for carving because they tend to have a really nice round shape to them. And you also have a lot of ground to cover where, like, the front of a pumpkin, you have so much real estate. You can do so much with it. It's fantastic. So, yeah, um, definitely, like, more creative things that you can do on the front of a pumpkin that would be more difficult to do with a turnip. But that's not to say that you can't still do very creative things with turnips. It's just that pumpkins are slightly easier to carve as a result. So, <laughs> oh man, you know, that's actually a fair point. Maybe if we did have more of the human shaped monsters that were hanging outside, maybe that would spook away people from smashing pumpkins. <laughs> That's actually a fair point. I've never thought about if the houses that had people waiting outside had that issue. <laughs> I'm guessing they didn't because they would be able to scare people off. But unfortunately, we we did not have something like that in the underground. So, oh my gosh. But here's the thing. So pumpkin carving was uh, one of my favorite things about Halloween. Um, and I'm going to describe how it works. And you all might be a little grossed out by like some of the parts of the pumpkin carving because it turns out pumpkin is a squash and squash is really good for making pies and other things. Um, but it's also really kind of like slimy. <laughs> And kind of gross inside. So you have to, first of all, you have to hollow out the pumpkin. So you'll get a pumpkin, you'll carve into the very top, just like this. You'll pop off the top so that you can get the guts inside. <laughs> and the guts are really, really slimy. They're, um, it's very tasty, but you have to like get all of them out because if you leave any in there, it's much easier for the pumpkin to start decaying pretty quickly. So you want to get the guts out. So get the guts out. So um, this particular picture that I found was showing this with a spoon. Don't use a spoon. If you're going to do this, use your hands. <laughs> What we would do is you would get an entire table completely clear and then you would get either a tarp or just newspapers, something to set on the table underneath your pumpkin. And then you just like reach in with your hands, you get handfuls of the pumpkin guts and you pull them out and you slop them out um, and just rinse and repeat. <laughs> You know, that's fair. If you don't have hands, it's okay. You can use a spoon. That's acceptable. The spoon is fine. If you don't have hands and are a tank, that is fine. <laughs> the spoon is totally acceptable. I actually for a really long time insisted on using a spoon because I didn't want to go in with my hands, but like you just, just do it. It's just better. It's just fine. You can wash your hands off afterwards. It's fine. Um, so yeah, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, no, pumpkin insides do have a very interesting smell to them as well. They're very tasty when you make them into things, but boy, they have a very distinct smell to them. <laughs> so anyway, um, you pull the you pull all the guts out. Uh, make sure that everything is is relatively good inside. Man, you know, Sky, oh, you could wear gloves. I've tried that. I still got. I still got pumpkin guts inside. Like, I don't know if I was just really bad at it or if like when I was pulling my small snake hands out, like I just kept like getting some of the guts in there. I just took them off eventually. <laughs> I think 
if you're better than me at this, you could wear gloves and you would be fine. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was not good at this though. Oh man. You know, it was a skill issue, 100%. <laughs> some silly out of context moments you just reach in get the pumpkin guts pull them out <laughs> oh god so yeah, anyway you you pull all of the pumpkin guts out and then you have this nice wonderful hollow pumpkin and now what you will do most of the time is you will trace out what kind of design you want um some extremely skilled people that i know just like carved it like without any um markings ahead of time i'm really impressed by those people i always would do markings <laughs> just to make absolutely sure but yeah so um this is what this would look like so most of the time you'll use like a marker of some sort um just on the outside of the pumpkin you mark what sort of designs you want and then you start carving um do know that things that are really thin are generally really difficult to make work um because uh yeah they're gonna want to kind of like fall off so um if you're very good you're able to make very thin slits and things and uh <laughs> like i've seen some people who are actually able to make pupils in these sorts of eyes so you can see this is just a hollowed out eye but i've seen some folks who are very good and can make it look like it has pupils as well and it's a very impressive but yeah so you'll go and carve at it. Here you can see um, what this person is using is something that's very common in my country, which is these really kind of crappy pumpkin knives. They're really, really tiny, but they're fairly good at like quickly cutting through a thing. And they've got like enough of a guard on them that you're more or less okay giving them children. Like they're not gonna hurt themselves on it. Um, unfortunately, they do snap really easily though. <laughs> which is not super great so um they come in like packs of five or something and you'll go through a couple of them which is very frustrating um oh geez sorry that was a really loud motorcycle what the hell i i feel like i've been i feel i feel betrayed there's snow outside there shouldn't be motorcycles hmm I need to have a word with the weather about this. Apparently it needs to be more cold. <laughs> and then the motorcycles will finally be gone. Oh. But yeah, um, you can technically, at one point in my life, I just used a knife, like a regular knife. <laughs> I just gave up on this tiny little implement. A regular knife does work, but it is a lot easier to accidentally get close to cutting yourself. Um, so the really tiny ones are definitely a little better. <laughs> ghost bikes. The ghost rider. No. Oh my God. That's true. It is Halloween. Maybe it's not even a real biker. It's the ghost of a biker <laughs> coming here to haunt me. God damn it. God damn it. Every time I think I'm free, even the ghosts are coming back to haunt me now. <sighs> so anyway, <laughs> what if it was a snowmobile? <laughs> Man, that would be absolutely wild. Oh, there would have to be a lot of snow for that. That'd be no good. <laughs> Someone is dressed up as Nick Cage's Ghost Rider. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Now I gotta, I gotta keep an eye out. Maybe Nick Cage is coming for me. <laughs> I'll have to post lots of pictures of him all over the place. Just, just like with Sawin, I'll, I'll be able to post a bunch of pictures of him as a ghostwriter, and then he'll know not to haunt this place. It'll be fine. It'll be perfect. <laughs> It'll all work out just fine. <laughs> oh God, they formed a snowmobile gang. <laughs> oh God. Well. Unfortunately, it looks like it might be the end for me, folks. So um, before we get too much further, uh, uh, let me let me see if I can't at least um, finish the Yumi slides before I'm, I'm taken from this world by the snowmobile gang. <laughs> People will just think I'm a massive Nick Cage fan. <laughs> it's true. I'll just have pictures everywhere. 
Oh, no, I wanted to show this to you all because this is what this looks like when it's done. Um, so you'll end up putting most of the time like a small candle inside. Um, sometimes I've seen folks use like battery powered candles. Um, so <laughs> I know that sounds kind of silly without context, but they're essentially like plastic candles that have a little light inside and then you can just flick the light on. I have generally found real candles are slightly more reliable. I don't know, this tiny little candles are not very good. <laughs> I feel like they die really fast. Oh gosh. But yeah, um, then you put your little candle inside, you put the lid back on the pumpkin, and then it looks like this, which is wonderful. So I thought this was a really nice design that someone had come up with. So they've got like fantastic little scars on one side for the eyes. And then you've got these great teeth that are there too. Those are kind of hard to pull off without accidentally chopping them off. <laughs> Oh gosh, but yeah, I think that they end up looking very, very good. Oh, and that, yeah, exactly. Real candles also give an ominous flicker, which is just chef's kiss. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So something kind of similar to the moon festival that I wanted to do here is I was thinking that it would be really fun to make a pumpkin with y'all just to celebrate Halloween and to ward off for the dark winter months, which at the time that I wrote this, uh, the dark mint winter months ahead, I can't even talk, I'm so upset about the snow. <laughs> the dark winter months ahead, uh, but unfortunately for me, they're already here. <laughs> You know, I actually wanted to get a real pumpkin and figure out how I could do like a hand cam, but it would be such a mess if I did this on my desk. So I'm going to do the next best thing. <laughs> so it'll be kind of similar to what we did with our very first stream, but I'm going to carve a bit of a metaphorical pumpkin. I've actually posted a version of this in the Discord for anyone who wants to do this themselves, but I thought this would be really fun. We can, yes, we can, we can make a lovely Pararo carving for our one and true God. <laughs> but yeah, um, doing a real pumpkin carving, I feel like would be a bunch of fun at some point. I think that would be cool to do with y'all. So yeah, let me go pull this up um, and then we'll get to doing a carving and then kind of doing just the rest of our zatsudan here Ooh. so let me go grab i'm actually gonna have a drink of water everyone don't forget to hydrate i'm gonna have a drink real quick and then we'll hop into this Pumpkin guts for the pumpkin god. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the dark winter months ahead, as in a minute from now. Yep, it's here. It's already here, but apparently the ghost riders are already coming for me on their snowmobiles, which is not great. <laughs> Hydrate before you die, Dre. Yeah, no, I'm gonna try not to die. I hope the snowmobile gang doesn't get me tonight. <laughs> We're gonna see if that actually happens, though. <sighs> But yeah, we're going to, <laughs> we must summon the pumpkin king. Oh gosh. You know, for a really long time, I've really been wanting to do a watch along with you folks. And I kind of thought about doing a Halloween movie, um, but then the timing just got kind of crazy with everything going on. So what we might have to settle for is doing something in the later months, um, doing something kind of closer to December. I think that might be pretty good. But yeah, let's go ahead. And let's, let's draw some stuff. <laughs> Give me one second. I'm going to pull up really quickly. <laughs> I'm going to get a little reference for myself real quick. Yeah, I was kind of trying to decide what I wanted to watch with you folks. I kind of was thinking, um, I really got in the mood to watch The Princess Bride because it's been many years since I've watched that and I thought that would be fun. But then I was thinking we could watch The Nightmare Before Christmas because that's pretty iconic um, as far as Christmas is concerned. Uh, and Halloween, honestly. Um, but yeah, I haven't quite decided yet because there's a lot of really good things. We could also just like hang out and watch some anime. <laughs> Which I 
think it would be great. But yeah, no, it's been a long time since I've watched The Princess Bride and it is so good. It is so good. I really want to watch it again. So yeah, I think that would be super fun. Okay, let me pull this up real quick. Uh, oh, whoops. Didn't mean to pull that up in this one. Give me one second. <laughs> I was trying to pull that up as a reference in a different screen. Um, let me see. Can I not pull that up? <laughs> Put on our jump scare. <laughs> Give me one second. Can I not pull that up in a different screen? Mm. Professional over here. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I figured it out. I figured it out. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Okay, I got a reference now. We're good. I wanted to make sure I had a good reference for my Pororo Sama. Ooh. Okay. That'll go right here. So I can see that. And then we're going to do some carvings of our glorious Pororo Sama. <laughs> God, you know, I've been meaning to watch Paranoia Agent. Oh, I started it a long time ago. And then I just, no, I didn't have the time to finish it. But yeah, that's a very, very spooky series. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I would love to watch some of that. I think that would be fantastic. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I would love for there to be a Blue Archive Halloween event. We've never had one, but I feel like it's just ripe for that. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. I think that would be super fun to see the costumes that everyone would wear. <laughs> I do feel like uh, Hanako would, would have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> I think it would be very good. Oh man. The scariest student, Halloween, Saya. God, it's true. <laughs> oh, man. I would love to see them do that, though. I feel like there's so many great holidays that they could do. Like, I love that they've done a Christmas event and a New Year's event. And hopefully at some point they'll do something with Halloween. That would be so good. Oh, that's true. You got to have the sweets club in the Halloween event. God, that's so true. Oh. That would be so important that would absolutely have to be the case i've actually been going through i have a ton of momo talks that are all sitting around um a bunch of them came in with this last patch because some students got unique items so i've been going through those and i realized i hadn't done kazu says yet um just her regular recollection lobby and her story because i'd been really busy and so it was really fun to go through i love the after school sweets club so much they're so adorable. Ugh. I don't know. To be fair, I love I love so many of the students in Blue Archive. I love them all. <laughs> Imagine if the Gourmet Society met the Sweets Club on Halloween. God, that would be incredible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to cheat really quick. I'm looking at my reference and I need this to be... Slightly more derpy. Okay, so we're gonna turn that like this. Perfect. Okay. Carving cheating is over. <laughs> I turned the eye slightly. Okay, let's see if I can't, like, make this really a gigantic eye, as Pororo sama has a gigantic eye. <laughs> I'm only cheating a little bit. <laughs> only slightly cheating a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh, the gourmet versus the sweets club trick or treat competition. Ah, oh, that'd be so good. That'd be absolutely amazing. God, I hope they do a Halloween event at some point. I think that would be so fantastic. Ugh. God, that'd be so good. I would love that. I'd love if they did that. You'll have to see, though. They've had some really great ideas. Like, I'm very excited for this event that we're going to be playing over the weekend. Um, I've been very, very excited for revisiting Millennium, seeing the game development girls again, getting to see Toki. It's going to be super, super fun. 
God, that's actually a good question. I feel like in a trick-or-treating competition, Sensei would probably have to be neutral. But I think, let's be real, if the After School Sweets Club went up against the Gourmet Research Society, Sensei would be kidnapped by the Gourmet Research Society. <laughs> Unfortunately, they would get to Sensei quickly. I am not saying Sensei would be on their side, but they would definitely kidnap Sensei. It would be over. <laughs> oh, poor Hasumi would have another life crisis meeting Haruna. God. God, that'd be so sad. Oh, man. Yep, Sensei and Fuka would just be kidnapped. <laughs> Both of them together. Oh god, it would be no good. Yeah, no, I think I think that unfortunately would happen. Um <laughs> God, now I really want to see something like that. I do hope that they consider doing uh, something like that in the future. Okay, so what I could do to cheat here is just copy this eye over, but I'm going to do my best to try and copy it. So let's do it. Let's try to copy it as best as we can. Urgh. Okay, we're going to do this. Oh, this is looking pretty okay. Got the general look of it. Oh my gosh, Halloween jewelry would be amazing. Oh my gosh, that would be perfect. Her poison could be put to good use. <laughs> Here's the thing. I adore Hina. I would love, 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 love Halloween Hina. I'd, I'd love Hina with any costume though. I think Hina is a boss. She's so cool. <laughs> She's so awesome. I don't know. Maybe Halloween would give her the chance to finally take some time off. Maybe her and like the prefect team could like go to a party together and it would be fine. And <laughs> they wouldn't have to be working all the time and it would be fine. Ah, those poor girls. Them and the Justice Task Force, man. I feel like so many of the students in Kibotos are just way too busy all the time. Oh, oh my god, Yoshimi and Junko would bond at a soul level. <laughs> oh my god, I want to see them interact so badly. That's something that I love when different characters from different schools get to interact. Oh, it's so good. It's so satisfying to see. Oh. <laughs> oh god you know so true we we did have christmas in july we could have halloween off season <laughs> this is so true oh god all right i think this is a fine eye i think that this relatively matches it's close enough um let's go do this real quick nice and then we've got to add, um, Pororo-sama actually has eyelashes, so we're gonna go and, and add those real quick. <laughs> so we're gonna carve those right up here. We can't connect it, I think. I think we're gonna do this instead, because one of them is right above the pupil, and I can't connect that without the pupil falling off, so we don't want that. Ugh. You know, that's actually an interesting point. I do feel like Gehenna would go really hard with Halloween. I feel like they probably would be the ones hosting it. God, that would be such a great excuse to go back to Gehenna too. Ooh, ooh, that would be so good. <laughs> Natsu clashing with Haruna. Man, I wonder if those two would get along or not. They might get along. Ooh, I don't know. Oh my gosh, Katrina. Aru! Oh my gosh, with the skull makeup? Oh my gosh, I want, I want Day of the Dead feet. Oh, 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 oh. Can we, oh, oh my gosh, I really want this now. I would love them to be wearing Katrina makeup. That would be so wonderful. Can you imagine? Oh my God, they would look amazing. Oh, I almost want to make fan art of that now. <laughs> I wish I had more hours in the day. Oh. God. Yumi is overheating. This is true. Oh, yeah. Um, so from uh, that is an excellent question. So the makeup that a lot of folks from Mexico will wear that looks like skulls, um, it is called Katrina makeup from what 
I have been told. So yeah, I think that would be wonderful. I think that would be so good. Can you imagine that makeup is so gorgeous? <sighs> I wish that I was better at makeup so I could actually pull that off. <laughs> I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Oh, God. I have to go hunting now. Maybe, maybe someone has made fan art of this. I don't know. Maybe at some point this is something that I could do. Draw them with this beautiful, beautiful skull makeup. It'd be wonderful. <laughs> oh, man. No, this guy! So when are we smashing this pumpkin? <laughs> Oh, God. It's protected. It's mine. It's safe. <laughs> I've kept it inside. Oh, my God. No, no, not the ghost bikers. The ghost bikers, they're coming back. They heard that it was time to smash this pumpkin. It's not time yet. I have to at least carve it first, and then it will be fine. <sighs> okay. Let's go. I'm going to sharpen these up slightly okay the ghost bikers man <laughs> bear is gonna be sitting in a chair nearby wearing the executioner costume <laughs> I'm so glad y'all enjoyed that when I was looking for references I laughed so hard when I found all of those costumes <laughs> incredible oh my god oh there's some very very funny costumes that they they do here <laughs> i think we're gonna do the blush next okay so pororo sama has these cute little oval blush spots so we're gonna go carve those oh Pororo sama. You're looking so good as a pumpkin. <laughs> Your fancy little eyelashes. <laughs> oh, God. Now, real talk, I actually don't understand how they're driving around outside. Um, it's really, really icy right now. There was a bunch of warnings about, like, going out, which is why I figured we would get no trick-or-treaters, because, like, you don't want kids slipping on that. Yeah, I don't know. Apparently, these ghost bikes are just built different. <laughs> They're able to put up with some really questionable icy weather. Ugh. It's especially awful because um, even the trees outside haven't recognized that it's winter yet. So like the leaves haven't fallen off yet. So that's going to be super fun. They're all going to fall down at once and there's just going to be snow. And then it's just going to be leaves and snow. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is unfortunately already snowy outside where I live. Um, winter has officially arrived. I'm not happy about this. <laughs> I thought I had at least two more weeks. <sighs> I don't know. Thankfully, it didn't snow too much. Um, there was like a noticeable layer of snow and Bear still had to go out and shovel, which was unfortunate. I was really hoping it was all going to melt, but... <sighs> yes, no. I do have to get in lots of <laughs> good warm cuddles after this. I had to turn up the heat a lot because uh, I woke up and it was like, what? Why is it so damn cold in here? And then uh, I was like, oh, I see. <laughs> I must turn the heat up. I understand now. <sighs> Apparently some of my coworkers, I don't know. Some of the people who've lived here longer than me, I think, unfortunately, it they have been um, broken by the winters because uh, one of my coworkers was like, you turned your heat on. My house was fine. And I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> don't give me this just because you're broken and you're like, it's fine. It's like 60 degrees in my house. <laughs> I don't want it to be 60 degrees. I'll die. I I can't. I can't. I'm a snake. I need the warm or I'm just going to I'm going to be not functional. <laughs> Listen. Even 60 degrees inside is a little 
a little chilly for Bayer. He'll be like, hey, you want to turn the heat up a little bit? But, um, oh, actually, fair enough. My apologies. My apologies. Uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me get that for y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. That is, that's about 15 degrees Celsius. Um, so yeah, 15 degrees Celsius, one five. Um, it is a little chilly in the winter. Um, you can kind of like feel it in the air at that point if it's 60 degrees, <laughs> right? It is a little chilly and uh, God, God, my coworkers are definitely nice, but like, oh my God, I cannot believe these people. <laughs> Like what? You you turned the heat on, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Though, come on, it's that's that's the kind of temperature that's fine for outside. But once you're inside, at least make it like a little warmer than that. Like that's kind of ridiculous. So yeah, I'm glad you all agree with me. <laughs> I was flabbergasted by that. <sighs> right, that person must have an insane metabolism. You should see some of the people around here. I don't know, the winter has truly broken them. I see people walking around when it's, um, so 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. They'll just be in shorts, like no pants. They'll be in shorts. Like you have to like, <sighs> When I go outside in the winter, I'll have like multiple layers on and this gigantic coat and a hat. And then like my old neighbor across the street like walks out in like, I don't know, maybe a sweatshirt and is just like, oh, how's it going? I'm like, God, how? <laughs> how? It's so cold. I've lived here for a while now, but like I'm not going out in shorts. Here's the thing though. The cold has broken me slightly where um, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, that doesn't feel too cold. It feels cold, but like, I'm not gonna die. Um, <laughs> and it's totally fine if you're one of those people. Here's the thing, I wish that I was like that. I wish I had that kind of strength. I don't, unfortunately. <laughs> If I were to go out in just a skirt, I would die. I would actually die. But, um, I don't know. I do, I do have a new concept of how cold it really can be. Like, when you go outside and you take a breath and your throat hurts <laughs> because it's so cold, that's when you know it's cold. And that's when you know you're screwed. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, thank you, Alex, for the super chat. How's this for a Halloween theme event? The After School Sweets Club tells ghost stories like those Halloween terror tales of the park specials from G from J.G. Quintel's regular show. God, that would be amazing. God, here's the thing. All of you have had such fantastic ideas. I feel like the After School Sweets Club would be all over spooky stories. <laughs> I feel like that would be perfect. Telling spooky stories, and then they'll have a trick-or-treating showdown with the Gourmet Research Society. <laughs> That's absolutely incredible. Okay. I have to figure out how to do this. I think... I've been sitting here trying to think about this. I think I'll make the beak, like the top bit of the beak, and then I've got to just do the tongue by itself. I think that's what's gonna have to happen with Pororo Sama. <laughs> right? And that's the thing, that's such a brilliant idea. Natsu would totally tell scary stories. That'd be amazing. <laughs> oh God. You know, that's also true. She'd find a way to make the scary stories romantic as well. <laughs> oh God, the After School Sweets Club is wonderful. Seeing them in like a different scenario would be so wonderful too. I would absolutely love that. <sighs> okay, I think this is going to work for a beak. Ugh. If not, I might cheat a little bit. Hmm. No, I think I need to... Hold on, I'm going to finish coloring this in. I'm going to cheat slightly. <laughs> I'm going to cheat and I'm going to get rid of this bottom bit. Okay. We're going to... Do this real quick. <laughs> it's kind of hard to carve a beak. Yeah. 
Okay, we're gonna do it like it's the top because this is like the top bit of the beak. And then we're going to do Pororo-sama's tongue. <laughs> How do I wanna do this? I think, let's go like that maybe. That seems good. Let's do it. Okay. Carve it just like this. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Actually having... <laughs> I do love the relationship that Himari and Amy have, where <laughs> they have learned to tolerate each other's very extreme temperature differences. <laughs> actually really liked um I did Amy's um newest story today where she actually got a unique item which is pretty exciting um but her <laughs> her story I thought was deeply funny because it dives more into the fact that she's just like supernaturally warm all the time like to an absolutely absurd degree <laughs> here's the thing as a snake I have to be on um on Amy's side because like I need, or excuse me, excuse me, I have to be on Himari's side. <laughs> I love how I immediately said the opposite of what I meant to say. I'm on, I'm on Himari's side because I, I have to be warm, right? Like Himari is always cold. I have to, I have to be cold. But then you have Bear who <laughs> is frequently way too warm. So it works out, it works out. <laughs> So yeah, I do think um, generally Bear would prefer things to not be too warm um, <laughs> as opposed to too cold. Unfortunately though, uh, now that we've lived where we have for as long as we have, uh, he's also come to hate the cold just about as much as I do because it gets truly horribly cold here. It's just no good. This looks like a goatee. <laughs> Maybe I should make the tongue curl more. That's so funny. <sighs> okay, we're gonna give it another try with this. This is deeply funny. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try and make this beak uh, more like this. So it's like the top. <laughs> Maybe it will just look like Pedro Sama has a goatee. That's probably fine. <laughs> Gosh, I laughed so much when I got to that part of the story with Himari and Amy bickering about how cold or warm they needed to keep their club room. It's just, it's just too real. It's just too real. <laughs> I feel like Bear is slightly more flexible with warmth than I am, even though he is just a space heater. So it is good. He's been very flexible with me actually, um, keeping the heat up slightly. So that's been good. <laughs> I also make sure to have lots of blankets and sweaters and other things around though, so I can I can go from there. <laughs> the Petodon Warrior complete with goatee. <laughs> Maybe this is it. Oh my god. This is the next this is the next step, right? We're actually creating a new Pedoro. That's actually kind of amazing. I think Hifumi is gonna try and get a hold of this afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um how do I, how do I, maybe I do like a blip, like this, slightly more tongue-like. <laughs> it's still just going to be a mustache and goatee. <laughs> oh God, that's too funny. Okay. Yep. No, limited edition biker Pedoro. Oh, that's actually kind of perfect too, in light of all the bikers coming through as well. <laughs> Oh my god, Plains Fox, yes. You know, I've actually thought about playing that on stream. The Red Winter Office story. <laughs> I might need to do that at some point. Like as just a special episode, we'll hang out and we'll just play the Red Winter Office story because it's so funny. Oh my god, absolutely amazing. Oh gosh. Yeah, no, system philosophy, it is, um, whoo. 
So the, the area where I live, um, it's like the upper Midwest in the United States, pretty close to Canada. It gets very, very cold here. So we got some snow yesterday um, <laughs> and it's already uh, less than zero degrees Celsius or less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, I wasn't prepared for this, but yeah, no, it gets really chilly here this time of year. It's actually a bit of a joke where like, um, where I live, we get six months of winter. So <laughs> we get, uh, winter is from November to April. And then we have like two or three weeks of spring and then it's summer where there's tornadoes and it's really hot and humid all the time and then uh we get like a month or two of fall and then now now it's over <laughs> i think this is just a goatee it's just it's just become a goatee maybe i should commit to it <laughs> maybe i should just commit to the goatee oh god yeah no, for those of you who have briefly experienced snow, it can be really fun. Like if you have never seen it before, it's kind of wild. Like it's very light. Um, it melts really quickly when it's on your hands or if it falls on you. Um, but like it can stack up really quickly. There's different types of snow too. Like the snow that I grew up around in the underground, it was called powder snow. Um, it's the type of snow that people really want to ski on, which is unfortunately why I got roped into learning how to ski. <laughs> there was a bunch of uh, really bad snake skiing. Um, it was it was not pretty. It was not good. <laughs> but yeah, powder snow is ideal because you can kind of glide on it um, if you have like uh, skis or a snowboard or snowshoes. It's very light and it doesn't compact very well. So it's perfect. You can just go across it and it is very nice. Um, but then uh, <laughs> the wetter that snow gets, the harder it gets. And um, sometimes this happens because the snow will melt and it'll compact. Um, but certain areas just get like really dense, wet snow. Unfortunately, my area um, gets that. <laughs> so when it snows, it's really heavy, like really dense snow that just slops onto the ground and then it hardens into ice and it's really bad. Oh God. Oh my gosh, Mellow Mellow. Yeah, for those of you who live in the tropics, man, man, y'all get a lot of rain and it's so humid there. Here's the thing, that is my deepest, deepest condolences to those of you who have to deal with that. It's absolutely insane. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a different type of thing that y'all have to, have to deal with. <laughs> Instead of doing the tongue as full black, just do the lower outline. It'll define it better. So here's the thing, and the reason why I'm doing it as black is um, because I'm trying to imitate what it would be like if I carved it, and I'm trying to think. I guess that's a fair point. Maybe I could just do part of an outline. That's actually not a bad idea. Ooh, maybe I could do that. So we would do like, let's erase, let's erase. We'll do like this, because <laughs> we don't want it to fall off. Okay, let's try this. Otherwise it'll look like a beautiful goatee. Oh my gosh, Isaac, you're brilliant. <laughs> oh my God, it actually looks like a tongue. I might be able to, I might be able to pull this off. It'll still be a limited edition Pororo. It'll still be a biker Pororo. I'll find a way to like give it some biker stuff. <laughs> okay, we'll do. Maybe like this. Okay. Just do like very, very small slivers. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh my God, limited edition. That's beautiful. Okay. That was fantastic. That was such a good idea. Because <laughs> otherwise it looks like a goatee. I should probably still give this Pororo a goatee. <laughs> We're gonna do some stubble down here. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll just do just like this. <laughs> Oh my god. 
gosh, biker, biker parado sama. <laughs> oh gosh, he has system philosophy. Yumi, that reminds me of one quote, Russia has four seasons, winter, 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 and not winter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is very, very true. Oh gosh. Okay. We're gonna go with this. <laughs> oh my gosh, speaking of facial hair, Yumi Santa mustache for December. Oh my gosh, just like Cherry now. I could probably put that together. That actually is such a good idea. <laughs> I love Cherry Now's mustache so much. <laughs> oh man. Okay, unfortunately the stubble is not very convincing. I'm gonna get rid of it. We're gonna, we're gonna actually try to, a mustache here. <laughs> oh, this parado is so beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful mustache. <laughs> okay. We're gonna we're gonna go right here. Mustached parado. <laughs> Maybe I can do like how would I do a good goatee? I'm suddenly realizing goatees are kind of hard to draw. Uh. We can try that. <laughs> Dashing. I'm so glad you all think so. <laughs> it is an even more limited version of Panaro Sama. <sighs> We should be able to fetch quite a price for this on the black market. I'm sure Hifumi will be willing to pay quite a bit, but maybe we should hold on to it. <laughs> for one night only. Oh man. God, that's such a good idea though. I should have I should have a mustache. <laughs> that's such a beautiful idea. Okay. This is looking like a very good, very dashing mustache beautiful <laughs> oh my god this is so funny looking <sighs> okay we're gonna try the goatee I might just get rid of the goatee though <laughs> because the mustache is so good <laughs> no don't apologize for coming in late I'm glad that you're here to witness um the creation of Pararosama's <laughs> next evolution. <laughs> oh man, oh my god, this is like Gretchen from Scarlet Hollow. God, I'm so glad that you all have enjoyed that. That is one of my absolute favorite games, and it has been very fun getting to play that with you all. Albeit very slowly, I've been very, very slowly making our way through the story. I think I'm going to move some of this down just slightly. We're gonna cheat. Just a little bit. Tiny cheating. <laughs> Let's go move this down slightly. Exactly. It's it's not bootleg. It's new merch. It's new merch of Perado. <laughs> oh man. Oh, this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Biker mustache Perado. <laughs> Let's do a little bit more of this. Fantastic. Oh, our parado is beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Oh man. And then I guess we could do, I wonder if I wanna do the little like fun bit at the top that you would see because this is where we had to cut the pumpkin open. I'll do this. Hmm. Just like that. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, 
with system philosophy. Not winter in Russia includes muddy spring, short humid, scorching summer, and lastly, a week of beautiful autumn. My Russian friend who came to Japan to study said, we wait a whole year for that autumn. Here's the thing, I can relate to that. Um, I love autumn. It is my favorite season. All of the trees change colors. It's beautiful. It's the perfect temperature outside. And then unfortunately it becomes winter again. So my condolences to, to those of you who also have to experience really <laughs> brutal cold winters. Um, so you, you blessed folks up in Canada, uh, you folks who are up in Finland and Sweden. Um, it gets real cold up there, y'all. Good God, good God, it gets real cold. Oh, <laughs> Tofri, where I'm from, we have two seasons, wet and wetter. God, God, I feel so bad. Humid weather is actually the worst, actually the worst. It is unbelievable. You just like, you take a shower and you, it doesn't help. Like it maybe makes it so that you cool down a bit if you take a cool shower, but like everything is wet still. You just start sweating immediately. Ugh. God. Oh, Kuana's Love just posted a new animated fan art of me. Oh, God. Y'all are extremely nice. Oh, I'm excited to look at that. Y'all are so damn wonderful. Thank you. Also, there was so much fan art that was posted for the Yumi Versary. I felt bad I missed a couple of them. Um, when I was putting some stuff together. So I'm very happy that I was able to find them and uh, post them and like show you all them because they're wonderful, absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Gosh, I'd probably have to go hunt down. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to like add Discord as a source and that might be a little annoying. I'll have to figure out how to do that for next time. I will figure that out so I could put it on screen for you all. But y'all should go, um, if you're on the Discord, go and check it out. I am so excited to check that out after this. Oh my gosh. Oh, but yeah, no, humid weather is miserable. Absolutely miserable. I don't know, man. It's just like, I, so the underground um, was really dry. That was like the one merciful thing about it is that it was very dry. So even when it got hot, it would feel like you were baking to death, but like, I don't know, you could still go on living, I guess, <laughs> without feeling like you were sweating to death. Um, but yeah, humid, hot weather is something else. Like I know in Japan, you'll have to deal with that. And in Southeast Asia and uh, in Brazil and uh, anywhere that is close to the equator, it gets unbelievably hot and humid, which is absolutely miserable. <laughs> oh gosh. But yeah, no, it is rough. Yeah, no, that's true. I can convert GIFs to videos and then put them. Oh, actually, that's a really good idea. That'd be much easier than that's actually something we can do right now. We've finished our pumpkin. Our beautiful, beautiful Panado Sama. Hold on one second. I will export this and then that is a fair point. I could go make a gif real quick. Okay, give me one second, y'all. Let's make that go away for now. Y'all can hang out for a second while I go and export this. Okay, beautiful pumpkin. Oh, actually, I just realized there's one other thing I have to do with this pumpkin real quick. <laughs> no, bring it back. Don't you worry. The pumpkin will be back soon. In fact, I'm actually going to pull this up real quick. There is one last thing I needed to do with this. I need to add a layer that is glowing. So let's do that real quick. I'll do a glow layer. Let's glow just a bit. Because we've got to have. So you can see. Oh, there's a candle inside of it. Okay. It also makes it look like it's blushing, which is wonderful. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. And then something else we can do to help with that. Let's see. Let's try uh, 
add this real quick. Let's actually make that a little darker. Fantastic. All right. Beautiful. Let's add a little up here for good measure. It wouldn't be there, but that's so dark. I don't want that to look quite so dark. Fantastic. Ugh. Oh, that makes me so glad. Here's the thing. I think that doing pumpkin carving, whether it's like this or whether it's in real life, it doesn't matter like how good it looks in the end. It's just super fun. <laughs> I have so much fun doing this with y'all. Okay, so I'm gonna go export this and I'm gonna bring it back. So let me go. And then it's going to join us on the table. And I can also go get Kuan's art and pull that up. So let me go export this first. All version. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. And then let me go, I can go hunt for that on Discord here. But let me go first, we're gonna go bring our pumpkin here. <laughs> so let's go, Pararo pumpkin. Perfect, okay. Let's go grab this. Okay, perfect, yay! Our beautiful Parado pumpkin is complete! I think I might actually need to make some room for him. We're gonna move some of these other pumpkins real quick. They have been lovely. I'm gonna move that pumpkin. I'm gonna take this pumpkin. I'm gonna put it right over here. Beautiful. Beautiful! <laughs> It is massive, it's so good. All right, we'll make that just a tiny bit smaller. Fantastic. Hooray, we did it! Let's go! Chonky pumpkin. <laughs> Chonky Pararo pumpkin. <laughs> it was absolutely wonderful. In fact, what I might actually do, hold on one second, let me, let's get rid of these real quick. I'm actually just going to, prominently display this right here. Beautiful. <laughs> Not obscured by anything. Fantastic. Oh, lot he coming. <laughs> Yay! Let's go! Perfect. And then give me one second. I'm gonna go find that Halloween art. Let's go. To the Discord. Okay. Sky, I had the UV quotes open. Don't use a spoon, just scoop out the guts with your hands. Yumi 2023. <gasps> oh my gosh! <gasps> Y'all made such wonderful pumpkins! Yo, give me a second. I'm gonna export these. I'm gonna see if I can't have them all join us. Oh my god, this is, such, this is so great. Okay, let's save all these. Yes, save it there. I'm gonna grab your pumpkins, y'all. <laughs> These are amazing, oh my God. <laughs> y'all made such incredible things, oh my God. Okay, okay, I'm pulling these. These are incredible. <laughs> oh my God, these are so good. Okay, let me go. Okay. Oh my god, these are so good. Y'all did such a good job with your pumpkins. This makes me so happy. Okay, okay. Oh my god, this is incredible. Jesus. Oh my god. Y'all are so talented. Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna get this fan art pulled up. We're gonna have this hanging out up here again i'm gonna go get our, our nice little slideshow border 
Um, I'm about to have a bunch of pumpkins join us, so. <laughs> Let me move this slideshow border slightly up a bit. I'll put it like right there. And then y'all can see this gorgeous fan art. Okay, let me go import this real quick. Okay, Halloween fan art. Alrighty. And then give me one second. Perfect. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring this down behind this. Look at this. Look at this, y'all! Happy Halloween! This is incredible! Oh my god! You know, actually, it's, it's bigger than the border. We're gonna make the border go away. We'll just go like this. Happy Halloween! Is this not amazing? Oh my god, I'm so happy y'all told me about this so I could just pull it up on stream. <laughs> Look at how gorgeous this is! Oh my god, I love that outfit too. That's so good. And you've got a little chibi noko. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. This is so good. And then you all made a bunch of pumpkins. I'm going to do my best to, to pull everything up here. So let me go. Um, let's go pumpkins. Actually, hold on. I'm going to do something even better. Um, enjoy this art. I'm going to really quickly compile everything into one big image because then I don't have to import everything. And then I will just bring everything in at once. Okay. So let me go. <laughs> These are all so good. Oh my god, y'all. Y'all are absolutely fantastic. Okay. Let's go do this. Yeah, I know. Oh my god. Like, ugh. The pumpkin pin is fantastic. The adorable little horns. God, uh, this is incredible. I think that Kuan has to be doing the scales individually. They're so intricate. And here's the thing, what if, if there is a brush that Kuan's using, <laughs> I wanna know what that is. I had to hunt for so long to find a brush that I liked for my scales. Um, and even then I, I still tweak them whenever I draw them, so. Oh. <sighs> Okay, I'm going to import everyone's images into this. Oh, not those, these. Okay. Fantastic. And then really quickly, let me do this. Okay. I'm just getting everything in one big thing and then I'll also like stack them so you can see them. <laughs> These are so good, oh my god. <laughs> I'm so excited to show all of these. Thank you all for taking the time to make your own pumpkins. That makes me so happy. This is wonderful. Okay, let's see if I can figure this out. Um, let me stack these, I think like this. I'll have the spooky one right in the middle. <laughs> oh no, we have several spooky ones. Man, y'all picked things that were uh, <laughs> exactly my fears. Oh god. The things that I hate the most in this world. <laughs> oh god. Okay, give me one second. Alrighty. Really quickly, I'm just gonna get rid of. My mind is not remembering how I can get rid of black surrounding stuff, so I'm just going to manually erase it. We're just gonna roll with that. It's gonna be a little sloppy, but it'll be fine. Y'all will still be able to see the pumpkins. Okay. pumpkin with a rock on it. God, the rocks were terrifying. I can't believe that the rocks were actually appearing. Like, I definitely uh, didn't um, intentionally hit a rock, but in case I, I or I didn't, uh, I, I definitely didn't hit a rock. A rock showed up. Um, it wasn't my fault, is what I mean to say. 
can you imagine if I was intentionally ramming into the rocks? That would be kind of wild. But no, uh, I definitely didn't get scared and then run into a rock. Um, but the rocks were actually just appearing, and that was kind of horrifying to find out. Not a big fan. Not a big fan of that. <laughs> so that was... Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that was a really fun stream. I really enjoyed playing Dredge with y'all. There's actually a lot of games that we've played this year that I want to revisit. Sorry, you're hearing me furiously erasing things. Um, I'm just erasing black borders on some of these just so I can include them all. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Ugh. Sorry, I am almost done with this. And y'all will be able to see everyone's beautiful works. <laughs> oh, I didn't hit the rock, I didn't. Oh, oh, hi. Hi, Mark. <laughs> God, The Room really is one of those films that's just wild. Like, I've watched that film so many times. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those that does seem to get funnier the more times you watch it because there's new things that you just like couldn't process the first time you watched it. <laughs> oh god. Ugh. It's good. It's so good. <laughs> You're tearing me apart, Lisa. <sighs> okay, I think I've done it. Let's see. I'm looking at my screen. Maybe I need to organize them like this instead like that and then have this one like this I'm looking to see okay perfect okay all right that should work let's go ahead and export this And then I will show you all these beautiful, beautiful pumpkins. Everyone's pumpkins. Beautiful. Okay. And then let's go add these. Oh my gosh, they're still driving around outside. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Everyone's pumpkins. Let's go here. There we go. That's where I saved them. All right. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to tuck those away for a second because I got to move some stuff off the table real quick. So let's remove the balloons and Chibi Noko. I'm going to have Chibi Noko hang out there, I think. And then we're just going to bring everyone's pumpkins in. <laughs> Oh my god, these are amazing. Oh man, I have to shrink them a little bit though. Okay, it's all right. It's all right. You can still see them. They're beautiful. And then I'll make it so Pararo-sama is still poking out from behind. Okay, Pararo is right here. And then we'll have Chibi Noko in the background. Just chilling, hanging out enjoying herself. Actually, Chibi Noko can hang out on top of uh, <laughs> the Pararo pumpkin. I think that sounds good. That's rather fitting. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Let me grab this real quick. That can come along too. It'll be perfect this way. Okay. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> Chibi Noko on top of the hat. God, here's the thing. So um, the way that the software works that I've got, um, I'd have to import Chibi Noko and then put her on top of the hat. I might be able to, to get that figured out, but I'd, I'd be messing around with it for entirely too long. I'm going to make a note, though, to see if I can't make it so that I can have her pop in and out. That would be fantastic. But yes, let's talk about all of these beautiful, beautiful pumpkins. So we have some of my most feared things. Um, we have form uh, 1040. <laughs> A 
do hate, I do hate me some, uh, <laughs> I do hate me some taxes. They're horrible. <laughs> what are the worst things? What are the worst things? And then we also have the bikers, which is just also fantastic, deeply terrifying. We have this absolutely fantastic, uh, wonderful Yumi pumpkin. Um, with the fang and everything, which is fantastic. <laughs> we have a Hina pumpkin. Um, and then we have, let me go pull up the description on, on some of these. Because we've got, <laughs> guess that Pokemon, which is fantastic. <laughs> oh my God, these are all absolutely fantastic. Oh, but yeah, no. Y'all absolutely nailed these. <laughs> these are absolutely fantastic. <laughs> oh my god, these are so funny. Absolutely so funny. Who's that snack? <laughs> oh god. But you know, y'all absolutely nailed these. These are so good. Thank you so much for... <laughs> putting all of these together. I'm so happy y'all were able to make some pumpkins for this. I think we did an excellent job. We learned a lot about Halloween, Day of the Dead, and, and Samhain. It was absolutely fantastic. I didn't mispronounce that, I think, uh, nearly as badly as I thought I was going to, so <laughs> I'm definitely still not nailing it, but uh, it's much closer than how I was going to originally say it, so um, yeah. I think this was super good, y'all. Oh, this has been excellent. I had a really fun time hanging out with y'all for Halloween and talking about it, talking about the Day of the Dead. It has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you all so much for coming and hanging out. We have some really fun stuff that we've got planned for the rest of the week as well. So we've got some more Blue Archive that's gonna be coming up. Um, I look forward to that. We're gonna be playing through that event. Um, and then we have some other special things, secret things that are going to be happening next week. Um, look forward to that. We'll have some fun surprises coming up, so it should be fun. <laughs> oh god, I'm so glad that y'all have enjoyed these. I really love this sort of thing, like diving into different celebrations around the world and how different people like I don't know. I think there's lots of really cool festivals and I think it's really fun to share different traditions and different ways of celebrating things. So I think it's fun. I'm really happy we've been able to do this. I think the next one we're actually going to be doing um, will be for Christmas. So look forward to that. I have a lot of really fun things planned for that. So we're going to be talking about a lot of different Christmas traditions, some things that I have really loved, and then we'll be doing some fun stuff. Um, I'm excited for it. It's gonna be good. I'm glad y'all have had fun with this. This is fantastic. And thank you all for your wonderful pumpkins. I, <laughs> I love this so much. Absolutely fantastic. And then, God, Kuan, thank you for this fan art. This is so gorgeous. God, I want, I want a Halloween outfit just like this. This is so good. <laughs> so good. Yumi Santanoko. Oh, no. Oh, no, wait. I, I've screwed myself. They know. They, oh, no, I mean, they know nothing. They know nothing. Uh, definitely not Santa. <laughs> definitely, definitely not Santa. Don't think into it too much. <sighs> fine definitely fine everything's fine ah, anyway um <laughs> so look forward to that that will be the next one of these um that we're going to be doing um and yeah uh we're gonna have a bunch that we're gonna be doing throughout this year and then you know next year we're gonna have a bunch as well i guess technically we just have christmas that's coming up this year and then we've got a bunch next year that we'll be doing so it's good. It's gonna be so good. But yeah, look forward to it. Um, I'm super excited to stream more Blue Archive with you all. It's gonna be really, really fun. And I'm very excited for some of the fun stuff I've got planned for you all shortly. So it's gonna be good. Yeah, I know, time does kind of fly. I can't believe that it's gonna be November. For some of you, it's already November. How crazy is that? Absolutely wild. I feel like that happened so fast. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. 
Oh, God. But yes, the anniversary is indeed coming up next Wednesday. I might have something planned for that day. It might be the special thing. So look forward to that. Um, Y'all will hear more about that. Um, I'll eventually have to have the secret sort of be spoiled because um, <laughs> I'll have to post a waiting room for it. <laughs> I look forward to that. Um, I should have the waiting room ready for that. I think next Monday I should have that ready to go for y'all. So look forward to that. That will be fun. I have a very fun thing that I've been planning. Um, so yeah, look forward to that. It will be good. <laughs> I, know, I don't know how this year is already almost over. <laughs> I feel like that happened so fast. I don't understand. <sighs> but yeah, anywho, y'all are wonderful. Y'all are so, so wonderful. Please take care of yourselves. <laughs> please, please be well. I, I feel that in my bones. <laughs> Toru, I'm still stuck in 2019, not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, no, time has been a, a weird thing, especially over the last couple years. It's been a good year with y'all. I have really enjoyed it. I'm super excited for what we're still gonna be doing in the last two months here, so. <sighs> it's gonna be good. So yeah, look forward to some more stuff this week and next week. And um, thank you for coming and hanging out with me for Halloween. Best of luck to everyone who will be doing Day of the Dead celebrations over the next couple of days. All of my love goes out to you. I hope that everything goes well. You have a fantastic time. You get to taste lots of really good food and spend some good time reminiscing and celebrating. So yeah, it's gonna be good. Ooh. But yes, yeah, um, pretty much uh, any time that we, I think the plan is any time we do one of these. So um, this series I've decided to call Celebrations Across the World. Um, anytime we do one of these events, uh, I'll always post something in the Discord so you folks can draw along while we're doing stuff. And it'll be good. We'll have lots of drawings, <laughs> many things to include here. But yeah, spooky happy thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, no, can you believe it? We're actually, oh my god, that's true. We actually are ending before three hours. That's actually wild. <laughs> I have to tell you all, so on the Yumiversary, I streamed a cumulative eight and a half hours. I actually felt that. <laughs> I actually felt that so hard. I think that part of that was that I had been doing so many preparations leading up to that stream. Um, I guess the two streams, um, but I was dead. I was like, <laughs> I was extremely flat Yumi after that. I was so, so physically exhausted in a good way. Like it was like a, oh my gosh, I did so much stuff. It was so much fun, but that is definitely a, uh, a once a year thing. <laughs> Almost nine hours of streaming. I actually can't believe some folks do that with some regularity. Like, um, I don't know that you folks have some crazy stamina. Like I've had some really long streams, like five and six hour long streams. And I've definitely felt a little tired afterwards, but like, it's been really fun, but like, Almost nine hours of streaming with a bunch of stream prep. It was good. It was it was well worth for the the Yumiversary. It was. <laughs> oh my god, it was crazy. Yeah, no, it was a lot. But I'm really happy it all went well. It actually went perfectly. I was so happy. I was worried that I'd run into random technical issues or things like that, but it ended up being fine. So that was good. Very very relieved. <laughs> Oh God, but yeah, y'all are wonderful. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out for Halloween. Best wishes for the Day of the Dead coming up here shortly. And I will see you all in just a couple of days here when we go back to revisit Millennium. We're gonna hang out with the Game Development Club in Toki and we're gonna have a bunch of fun. We'll make a bunch of polls, it'll be good. <laughs> Oh man, I can't imagine. After everything that you folks did, jeez. And Isaac, uh, at some point, I am hoping to find a way to play your wonderful commander deck on stream. Bear and I are gonna do some testing off stream and see if we can't figure out how to get tabletop sim running for this. But yeah, it would be super fun to show you all like the deck in action because I think it's gonna be really powerful. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I get to play with duels. This is gonna be great. It's gonna be good. But yeah, take care y'all. Take care of yourselves. Have a good rest of your day. Have a good rest of your night. Um, and I have, uh, 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 tongue tied. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. I shall see you all very, very soon. Bye.